Ireland. Adrian Devon, New Una and the Girls Well. When we got the news late on Tuesday evening and it filtered around, it just caused uh, a numbness in the village. Supports have been set up to date with grief counsellors, with the schools and the clubs for all uh, parents, teachers and um, and friends. The village is asleep, the, 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 my Colin and, and the wider community in Galway. And this mass has been fed. The 100% redress party has announced another local election candidate. Joy Baird will contest June's elections for the party in the Bunkrana electoral area. She has been a defective concrete block campaigner for over seven years and is one of the co-founders of the redress focus groups. Miss Baird says while the defective block crisis will be top of her agenda, she also wants to tackle other issues that matter. The Justice Minister says there's a lot of misinformation circulating about the government's hate speech legislation. It aims to update our laws to be in line with the social media age. Some opponents of the new laws claim it's part of a woke agenda, while others feel it shouldn't be a priority for the government. Helen McEntee says she's open to changes if they are warranted. There there will be amendments to this legislation. I will, insofar as I can, address the concerns that people have raised. But there's a lot of misinformation. I've not brought forward one piece of legislation and I've brought almost 20 now where I haven't accepted or brought forward amendments. A car has been seized in Donegal after the driver was suspected of having a fraudulent driving licence and insurance disc. On Tuesday, while on patrol, the Letterkenny Roads Policing Unit were alerted to a vehicle having no insurance. The car was subsequently stopped and the documents inspected and it emerged they were fraudulent. Items were seized along with the car. Guardies say investigations are continuing. They're warning motorists to never drive without insurance and to leave the creation of official documents to the correct relevant bodies. Finally for weather, cold today with outbreaks of rain, heavy at times and falling as sleet and snow in places. Rain will become patchier this evening with dry spells developing. Highest temperatures of 4 to 6 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with news again at 10 o'clock. Until then, good morning. This bank holiday weekend, it really could be... That's right, there's one bank holiday millionaire guaranteed in the Lotto Plus raffle. (laughs) A millionaire? That would certainly put a bit of... into your long weekend. So play Lotto with Plus this Saturday for your chance to become Ireland's newest millionaire. The National Lotto. This bank holiday weekend, it could be you. Play responsibly, play for fun. The county's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. And you're very welcome to The Nine Till Noon Show this morning. Donald Kavanagh with you on the show until 12 noon today. It is a Thursday, but we're going to have our Friday panel this morning because there's no Nine Till Noon Show tomorrow. Joined by three very formidable people. We'll introduce you to them in just a moment. Don't forget, of course, we want to hear your views and your perspectives on the issues of the day. You can text or WhatsApp us on 086 60 25000. You can call us 074 91 25000 00353 Seven four nine one twenty five thousand. If you are outside of the dialing area, and Shannon and Donna Marie taking your calls, Donna Marie uh, producing as well this morning. It's going to be a very busy day, and we'll be making somebody very happy a little later on in the program when we make a phone call and have a, a draw in studio. More on that anon. We'll also be introducing you to some of the finalists in the Community Hero Initiative, and we'll have Sean in the studio with us to discuss that. All that to come. But as I said before, we do anything else, we will introduce you to our. Our Friday panel this morning. We're joined this morning on Zoom by Letterkenny Councillor and the Fianna Fáil Whip on Donegal County Council, Councillor Kieran Brogan. We're joined by Gronya Hines, who is a member of Letterkenny Active Retirement, and we're joined by broadcaster and journalist Mary Hart. A very good morning to all of you this morning. Good morning. Uh, Mary, I'm going to start with you because obviously over, over the past week or so, the big story of the day has been the... Um, ascendancy of Simon Harris to the leadership of Fine Gael 
and he will be officially confirmed as Taoiseach later, uh, not later this month, early next month on Tuesday week, which is April 9th. Uh, he was effectively coronated. There, there was no competition. There was no other challengers to the Fine Gael leadership. They brought it forward a day. He was named on, on Sunday and it's all systems go. I mean, when I started in, in this job back in, in, in 1990, the name Hart was absolutely synonymous with, with Fine Gael in this county and you obviously would have grown up uh, given your own family history, you know, very much in, 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 at the centre of, of Fine Gael in Donegal. Is Simon Harris and the Fine Gael of today the same Fine Gael that you would remember from your growing up? I don't think so, um, but it's, it's, dif- it's a difficult uh, question to answer. Um, I, yeah, you're correct. My father was a, was a Fine Gael TD for 37 years and I was eight when he went into politics. So, um, you know, I was immersed in, in a, a, I suppose, a Fine Gael politics, but, but then I went off and studied politics in university myself. So I, I, I deviated in all directions myself. Um, I I would look at Simon Harris. I think um, the the quote I think uh, Vincent O'Toole. He, he, Simon Harris has risen without trace. Uh, another case of survival of the smoothest. I think that's one of the best descriptions because, to be quite honest, I know absolutely nothing about Simon Harris. And even when I went looking to find something, uh, you know, startling about him, I couldn't find it. Um, so it is not easy. Uh, you know, I know my father way down the years when there would have been these huge battles for for the leadership of of Fine Gael, you know, bet- way back when Gareth Fitzgerald, you know, was was challenging Liam Cosgrave. And, you know, when also I think it was Declan Costello was challenging, um, you know, there was this extreme kind of, you know, split where the, you had the conservative Fine Gael and you had the, the more modernist Fitzgerald and the new kind of uh, just society policies and all of that. I can't see any of that in Simon Harris. That's not to say he won't make a good leader or he won't make a good Tisha. That's yet to be seen. Um, but I do think uh, Fine Gael have kind of uh, would appear to have lost their way. But I don't know what way they were they were heading. And um, it's it's just the sign of politics of today. I think people are 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 not following party trends, but they're tra- absolutely following independence and that basically to me says people are looking for what they want personally and not what they see as the best thing for a country as a whole. It's interesting he does have the reputation of being the TikTok Taoiseach. He's more in tune with social media than they say any other politician in the country and uh, Oliver Callan reminds us of that mercilessly on every episode of Callan's Cakes. But by the same token it was interesting that when he spoke at that Fine Gael convention on, on Sunday last he was referencing law and order. He seemed to be very much referencing the old uh, standards, referencing the old ideals and, and trying to reclaim and, and go back to, uh, to to basics in terms of values. Yeah, I think um, you know the, the way this happened. Um, this is only my own personal kind of you know suspicion. Uh, uh, absolutely, I, I wouldn't ask you to speak on behalf on. of anybody. Um, but I think the you know after the referendum, and I absolutely think the Irish people voted because they didn't know what it was about, and they just said, "Oh, I have no idea what this is about," and it was nothing to to do with I don't like Fine Gael or I don't like Fianna Fáil or I don't like Labour. I really do think that's what it was. And, you know, you should give the electorate the intelligence, uh, you know, to be able to make that judgment call. But I think, um, you know, that Simon Harris, um, you know, I, th- I think what, what you've just said there, you know, the law and order aspect, uh, I, I think there was an awful lot of underhand things going on uh, that we don't know about and that Leo's decision to step out wasn't made one morning. He just woke up and said, no, I'm gone. He has seen this coming down the track, and I think what he has seen coming down the track is, um, you know, uh, the knives are out from some other wing of the party against him for his liberalism. So, um, you know, and and, uh, I think Phil Hogan's um, involvement in all of this would tell you, you know, I mean, Phil Hogan was was, um, very much, you know, part of the... Um, the older Fine Gael elements. That's my belief, um, and I think that's what really has happened. That you know that the, there there was a, a a purge going on in the background, and uh, Leo Varadkar was not going to be ousted. He was going to take the way out, and and he was probably going to go anyway. Um, you know, he'd been uh, I think, but he's young. So I mean, you know, I, I mean, um, Leo Varadkar, and I think personally, I think Leo Varadkar was doing a great job in my view. You know, uh, under difficult circumstances, and. Um, I don't think that Simon Harris is going to lift Fine Gael into some wonderful place 
for yeah, the I, next I, I, year. I have to be honest, I'm, I'm not exactly sure that Simon Harris is going to be much different to Leo Varadkar. So if this was a push to try and get someone different uh, at the head of the party, I'm not sure Simon Harris's ascendancy is, 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 is going to achieve that. Kieran Brogan, I want to turn to you because obviously as a Fianna Fáil uh, councillor, you're not in Fianna Gael, but your party is in government with them. So you have an alliance with, we obviously have the pact locally as well, but uh, nationally your, your two parties are, are working together. Uh, watching the way things are happening at the moment, what, 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 what's your take on the uh, the ascendancy of Simon Harris? This time two weeks, if someone said who'd be Taoiseach on April 9th, you wouldn't have said Simon Harris. I don't think so. Um, but I suppose they almost say that politics is about timing and judgment. And I suppose this is this is a great example of that, um, how things can change very quick. I think it's it's been a huge journey for Simon Harris himself. Uh, he's been in cabinet for some time. He has uh, a lot of cabinet experience. And, and we all know that the portfolio of health a lot of the time is sometimes can be a pass to, to the top job. And he's been through that through a difficult time during COVID. Um, nevertheless, I think there's an awful lot happening for him personally at the moment. And taking over leader of any group or any organisation, let it be a football manager or whatever, bringing people with you is huge to that. And I think having that element of trust um, will be huge at, at the beginning and then having a, a team around him as well. Uh, hard to know how that's going to fall and it's, it's not a call for me to make, but I mean, there's a huge amount of work for him to undertake at the minute and then you have the programme for government that's there now with um, the two leaders and Michael Martin, the Tanisha and Eamon Ryan as well. There seems to have been a good level of trust and understanding um, with the three leaders over the, since the formation of this government. Uh, to be fair. So he probably will fit in well to that, the fact that he's been at the cabinet table with them for some time. So I suppose the challenge may be his own party more uh, than the other leaders at this mm. point in time. And I suppose every party wants to put their own stamp in government. But the programme for government is there at the moment. And, and, <clears throat> and I suppose that's what they're going to work through. Does this potentially put Micheál Martin in a stronger position? Because in terms of the public perception, at least, Micheál Martin is now going to be very much regarded as the senior figure in the government. I mean, the, the, the wider public is going to look at Micheál Martin, perhaps, as the person they trust. Simon Harris is the new boy that's going to have to earn it. Well, I think in fairness to Micheál Martin, Micheál Martin has excelled over the last number of years and he seemed to be, uh, in my opinion, and you would say I would say that anyway, but he seems to be somebody that has been, I suppose, described as the elder statesman doing the right thing by the people at all times. And I think he, he has come across very well, not just in our own country, but throughout the world uh, as a responsible leader. But I think he'll do the right thing by Simon Harris as well. I think he, he, you know, he'll do the right thing by the country and he'll want to work closely with him, as will Eamon Ryan as well. Mm -hmm. But I think Mary touched on something uh, a moment ago about the, the, how politics has changed. And I think that it's probably become very much um, about the individual themselves, as opposed to when Paddy Hart would have been there or... or people in the past that would have stayed through the rough and tumble of politics and there was good days and bad days and I think if you watch closely what has happened the Finn Gael party over the last number of years that a lot of people who lost the top jobs have decided just to for the want of a better word put the fiddle in the bag and walk away so there has to be some reason as what's that happening is it because and you know we heard Kieran Cannon's statement and everybody heard it about how politics has changed and, and the abuse that people are taking in politics and I suppose that's something that, that people has to look at um, going forward as well as you know I don't believe that you're going to have the same long time level of service that you would have had um, from politics or, or ministers going forward so it's a, it's a big task for Simon Harris but nevertheless he has had the cabinet experience uh, he has been up in Letterkenny and in the North West he's familiar with it mm -hmm. um, he's he, you know he's done very well he's overseen the um, what would have been the ITs to the university status in and our he was there in January uh, yeah seems to have loads loads of energy but again it's, it's back to the team and it's back to the trust and loyalty around him and I think if, if they can I suppose continue to build that trust and get the team around him but the biggest challenge he'll have over the next number of days is deciding who to give the jobs to and sometimes getting back to the point I made earlier it has become too much about who gets a job and who doesn't and then some of them decide they're not happy because they didn't get a job they get into destructive mode so if he can steady the ship at the early stage um, I think he'll do fine. But with regards to the, the party perspective, I do think that he will have 
that there'll be a fair level of respect cross party to want to do the right thing by the country at this time. Grunia Hines, as a lobbyist and someone who obviously is fighting a corner for the people you represent in active retirement, but not actively yourself involved in party politics per se, what's your take on this? Is this a matter of meet the new boss, same as the old boss, or do you think there is change afoot? Well, I think there's a lot of change, and I don't agree really with uh, Mary, who really feels that maybe he isn't up to the job or he isn't uh, representing the Fin Gael as it really is. I think if I was... No, I didn't say that. I, just no, said I, I think in fairness she said she would give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. okay, maybe, sorry. Uh, I, if I was interviewing Simon, for example, uh, for the job of Taoiseach, I would be looking, first of all, at his qualifications in politics. He started very young. He was idealistic. He worked very hard. He was ambitious. And he rose to great heights, really, for his age. And I see him as a, a sort of a bridge between the old and the new, Fine Gael. Um, the fact that he is um, computer savvy is very, very important. And this goes down very well with younger people. And some of the younger people I've spoken to really think he is a good guy. They think he's ambitious. They think he's he's very... And they have... I think his... I myself am very interested in the education. That was my uh, role. And um, I'm delighted about the ATUs. I think that has really given a great boost to younger people. They can stay at home, which has helped parents who want to send their children to third level. And I really admire him for his uh, attitude to apprenticeships. Mm. Um, I have long, long thought that this is a very important thing for young people. Everybody is not academic. Academics isn't the be-all and end-all of everything. And I think that he's given this, this to younger people that there is another way to make a living. There is another way to uh, do what you want to do and what you're skilled at. So I admire him greatly for that. And I saw his passion over uh, the fact that the tricolour was over um, Mr. Macaulay's uh, coffin. So I know he is a patriot. I know he is a Republican, uh, but a peaceful Republican. So I admire all those things about him. He's dynamic. He's young. He, I think he would make a very good job. And I think uh, uh, really politics is the art of compromise. And I feel that he is really uh, would be good at that. He's a very nice personality. I met him quite a few years ago and I spoke to him about uh, the older people, what we want and what we didn't want. And he he was attentive. He wasn't looking around the room trying to pass, you know, he's ticked a box, he's talked to the chair of the uh, Age Friendly Alliance. And uh, he, he was interested. And he, he really did communicate. He's a very good communicator. Did anything so practical I, come of that I conversation? Am, I'm also from a Findale uh, household. And um, I do think that he will, you know, take up the banner on law and order, on fairness, on justice. And I do have a lot of uh, faith in him. Do you think this could be the difference between the current government returning to power after the next election in some form or a Sinn Féin-led government coming into power after the next election? Because the polls at the moment are interesting. We haven't seen a huge jump in the most recent polls following the announcement that Simon Harris was going to take over. But but do you think this is going to increase the chances the government has of getting back in? Because, I mean, at the moment, very few people would give the government any chance at all. Well, I think it'll be a lot to do with the communications, what people uh, understand about the policies of uh, Fine Gael and Sinn Féin. Uh, both have very good policies. They're very good people in both parties. Uh, and the people will have to decide who they think will be more efficient at uh, implementing the policies. Um, political um, experience is very important in the government. And um, the I think that Simon also... Uh, gets on very well with other leaders. And I think if Sinn Féin were in, and he was, I'm not sure whether they would work together, but I I don't see any problem in that. I think that he, he, he does think of the good of the country, and he has been very, very active in his policies. Can I go back to you briefly, Mary Hart, if I may, because one of the interesting things obviously is going to be how he gets on with the First Minister and Deputy First Minister at Stormont, how he gets on with Rishi Sunak and with uh, Chris Heaton Harris and those involved in in Westminster as well. Now, as someone who spent many, many years working with the BBC and someone who knows the Northern Ireland political scene very, very well indeed, how do you think Simon Harris is going to get on as a new Taoiseach in that space? Because we know Leo Varadkar maybe made a few missteps with some of his comments here and there and wasn't perhaps the best loved of of Taoiseach, particularly among unionists? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's important to, um, and I know, Gronia you mentioned, you know, experience in politics is, is extremely important, which it is, um, you know, but there are those who are born to be very good politicians and those that really are never going to make a great job at it. Um, I, I do think you, uh, the comment that Simon Harris was born when uh, Micheál Martin was just elected to the Dáil. So, you know, you, you, there's a massive gap in terms of experience there. And I, and I have said, I have looked to see amazing things that he has done uh, but he has had a meteoric rise. And that could all be down to just being in the right place at the right time. And I know that's how politics works internally and externally. Uh, he will be very, very heavily dependent on um, advisors. Um, and, you know, we all know that uh, the further away from from the the, the border, the, the the less knowledgeable you are about the the, the do's and don'ts of, of Northern Ireland politics and, and the foot work that has to be done. Um, I do think he'll, he'll listen. I think that's the kind of person that he is. And I do think he will make a good um, shot at negotiating because at the end of the day, um, whether, you know, what side of the political uh, divide that you might find yourself on or have decided you're going to be, um, Sinn Féin are, are a major player now, both North and South, and, and they will be. They're not going to go away. Um, and I do think it is important that, um, you know, everybody works together for the betterment of the country, not for an individual party politics and 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 finding. And I do know, I mean, the the, the days are gone uh, where you have one strong party like Fianna Fáil were in power for almost 40 years, you know, leading government and, um, you know, other parties just could never break that mould. Having coalition governments has to be the way forward. And coalition mm -hmm. does mean that you're going to have to you know, give and take both sides. I mean, that's not to say Sinn Féin's going to have its way all the time. And uh, likewise, neither will the parties that they may share power with. And I think Simon Harris going into Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland is a very, very messy place now, whether we think, yes, there's peace, but there's peace at a price. And that peace has come with a, 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 a an economy that's collapsed entirely. Um, you know, the number of industrialists that would look at Northern Ireland to go and, and set up, a, a, you know, a, a massive computer company or, you know, you'll never have the Facebooks and the Googles that are in Dublin and Belfast. They just don't look at it that way. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult situation and Brexit has absolutely pushed right back. Um, and I think we were moving along nicely as, as a cross border, uh, you know, from every direction, you know, economically and politically, and then Brexit just tumbled everything down. And it's a big work of, of um, a big job of work uh, to, to bring that north-south um, cooperation back again. Kieran Brogan, uh, you'll be very shortly going, I mean, you're probably on the campaign train already, let's be honest about it, but I mean, local elections coming up in June, uh, a, a busy couple of uh, week, weeks and months for you in terms of trying to get your, your place back at the, the, the council chamber in Lifford. Do you think this is going to make any difference to the forthcoming campaign or has it come too late to really uh, have any impact on the, the local campaigning? Well, just before I get into to answer the question of the local campaign, and Donald, I think it's important, Mary talks about Brexit and how maybe Northern Ireland is somewhat negative. I would have to, to disagree with her and, and far from me to, to praise a, a Fine Gael leader or Taoiseach, but you would have to acknowledge that uh, Leo Varadkar, when he was there as Taoiseach and indeed Simon Coveney as Minister for Foreign Affairs, I think the Irish government's handling of the whole Brexit situation over the last number of years was exceptional. Uh, it was top class. And, you know, it would have been a phrase that we all would have used over the years that, that people from Dublin or Cork are somewhat disconnected from the northern region and, and, and they don't understand it. But I would have to give credit where it's due. The stance that the Irish government uh, has taken and and stayed with it, stayed with it throughout the journey through different British Prime Ministers over the years was the right decision for Ireland as a whole. And I think they were steadfast in that position. And I think the point that's been missed by Brexit is that Northern Ireland economy is actually doing better now than it ever was doing before. Uh, the development of the Northwest City region, which we're part of here uh, in the Northwest and the Letter Kenny Dairy Joint Gateway, um, of us working very close together in Donegal County Council, Dairy and Surban Council, to, I suppose, bring together the critical mask of the region. The shared island funding, 46 million, that has gone into the Ulster University in McGee. Uh, the investment in Elton Galvin Hospital, and now the recently announcement of the A5. And, you know, in fairness um, to the outgoing Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, and I know that our own minister, Charlie McConnell, was very much a part of this. But, I mean, when they announced the funding for the A5, 
uh, it was very much part of the story that evening on the news that let, it was going to Letterkenny. So for for a long time, we may, we may have been forgotten, but I, mm. we've been front and centre in the North West. And I would have to acknowledge that. And I mean, all the figures will show that the investment in Northern Ireland has increased to, you know, maybe two or threefold. And I mean, big companies have invested in Belfast and Derry, and we see Finn through who are now in Letterkenny as well. And they would say when they carried out the assessment that they done, that the talent is in the Northwest and they commend the Derry-Donegal relationship. So I think we're in a much better place than maybe sometimes we give ourselves credit for. And I think a lot of good companies are in the Northwest. And I think we have an exciting time. And I mean, Northern Ireland now is one of the best places in the world to invest uh, because you have. I really don't see, Kieran, where you're getting that information from well, because I don't. Well, I, I, yeah. go, I'm, I, I don't see it. I, well, I don't, I, the vast I don't majority want, of people are, are you know, on um, our civil service uh, jobs, you're, you're uh, high right. unemployment, and you look at the at the Republic full employment. Maybe if you'd allow me to finish, Mary, I've I've attended many as chairman of the Economic Development uh, Strategic Policy Committee and the Gold County Council. I've been at many meetings with business people, um, not only in Ireland, but I mean another in, in London and in Boston, and I've listened to the companies firsthand, and they couldn't speak highly enough of the relationship we have and the work we're doing. And I commend people uh, like the ATU and the Ulster University and all the good things that's happening. And all you have to do is talk to the local companies, and they'll tell you about the, the huge success story so sometimes we beat ourselves up too much i think we have a good story to tell and the fact that any company coming now to the region has the advantage of the british market or the european market that's unequaled anywhere so i think we have uh, an exciting time ahead and hopefully now with commitment to the a5 and education is definitely a game changer and it has had in my opinion has been the game changer in our northern six counties as well it's how we change things going forward so i think we need to focus on the opportunities that's available for us and i think that that will bring us a long way, and and uh, and, and maybe uh, the, the yeah, biggest challenge, yeah, the biggest challenge, perhaps, is to get that to filter right down because it may very well be that the companies are happy and that certain people are happy, but is that filtering down into the bog set? Is it filtering down into the Cregan? Is it filtering down into the, the the wider population? Because the experience in the Cregan is not necessarily going to be the same experience of those involved in business and those well, attending economic development. I mean, you, 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 you just take a look. You know, you, I, at my view, and I, I've worked in Northern Ireland for almost thirty years. And, you know, the Republic has moved towards Europe all the time, has depended, uh, you know, and has been a huge player in the European affairs. For that reason, the Republic has ro rocketed ahead uh, in terms of, I mean, we have, we're, we're second um, wealthiest per head of, of population country in Europe. Uh, we have full employment at the moment. Uh, now, that doesn't mean to say that those that are on the the, the, the margins of, of, of poverty are not benefiting from that. They're not. But th that's another different work uh, uh, that has got to be dealt with and building more houses has got to be dealt with. But you look at Northern Ireland and you do not see the same vibrancy there. And I know the A5 and I've gone on that road to, to, to university through the 70s. I've worked in Dublin. I've come back up and down. It is the worst road and it is even worse now. And I don't see that A5 will, will that I, from what I'm told from people who are at the high end of, of the negotiating uh, from the civil service aspect, they said the amount of people that are now putting legal challenges into that is going to delay it by another 10 years. So we, just because it said it's going to happen, then the people who own the land are not going to let it happen. And that's unfortunately an issue that has been there is because the, there was a huge amount of money paid out to when they were developing the road to Enniskillen. And the people then on uh, the, the the value of land has dropped, and as far as they they want the same amount of money, and that's the issue. It's the problem yeah. with the A five is people who own the land will not give it up. Well, hopefully, a, in terms uh, of the A five, we've uh, had a number of public inquiries, we've had a number of courts. I mean, the, the point presumably will come where the reasons or the justifications for challenges will be addressed and exhausted and you know hopefully we will see movement on the A5 uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, Grania I want to bring you in here because I'm I'm, I'm conscious that uh, you, you're somewhat on, on the sidelines and I, I don't want that to happen. From Again from the point of view of someone who's observing this debate and I'm sure Grania you're the sort of person that loves debate like this What's your take on this issue of the, the North-South relationship, particularly in the context of a new Taoiseach and where Simon Harris is going to fit in and what impact Simon Harris is going to have on cross-border relations? Well, I think there's a very good situation at the moment in Northern Ireland where we have two ladies at the top and they seem to be very um, sensible. 
and their issues and their outlooks. And I am one of the few people who probably, I worked on the Falls Road uh, as a teacher, and I also worked in a Protestant school in Bangor, probably one of the few people who have worked in both areas. And I have a need, uh, um, I really do think that the people of Northern Ireland are very stoical and they're very uh, practical and pragmatic. And I found them both, there are so many things they have in common. And I think we, we, that's what we really need to look at. And I think the business um, community in the North is realizing how well the South have done, as Mary says, and uh, how, how we have through our compromises and our business people uh, developed our country. And I really feel that the people of the North of Ireland have that power to do the same. And I have great faith in them, maybe I'm an optimist, but I do feel that there's so much in common between both communities. And I think if that is emphasized and worked on, I, the, the worst thing I think ever happened when the Good Friday Agreement was uh, finished, that they didn't insist that all uh, schools were um, mixed. Um, I have worked in, as I say, in the Protestant Catholic schools, and I felt that that was a really basis I remember uh, uh, talking to a woman who had six children. She lived in Bangor. The only um, grammar school that she could go to was the St. Dominic's in the Falls Road, which was a long bus drive, uh, bus journey, and they really couldn't afford it. Uh, she ended up sending her to an intermediate school where uh, the academic achievement was very low and her child was very bright. And now I really f felt that all the schools should be, I think that's something if they worked on, uh, where they had the schools, Protestant and Catholics mix, mix everybody going to the one school. Even in, in the South here, I don't really agree with this system of Gael schools and national schools. I think that should be all national schools. I don't see why we should divide the community by some people going to one type of school and one to another. And I think that is something that I would love um, the Department of Education to work on. And I really do, I do trust the Northern Ireland people. They're very good, hardworking people and they will find a solution. Yeah, thanks indeed for that, Ronya. It's uh, 27 minutes to 10. We're going to take a short break. Back after these. It's the last week of Foy & Company's Big Spring Sale in Bally Buffet and Letterkenny. Huge reductions on Scatterbox cushions and Scatterbox wall art. Also in rugs and selected furniture in both stores and online at foys.ie. Call in store before Foy's Big Spring Sale ends in Bally Buffet and Letterkenny. Hello, I'm David Foley, Medical Herbalist. Are you suffering with stress, anxiety, insomnia? Then ask for Irish Botanica Peace and Calm, a traditional herbal remedy. Irish Botanica Peace and Calm has a naturally relaxing effect, ideal for stress, insomnia, jet lag, and pre exam anxiety. Call us a natural way, let a Kenny Shopping Centre for more information. Weather grinds farmers to a halt. For more in your Irish Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. With feed costs still rising and silage running short, an emergency meeting of the National Fodder Committee is planned. Record prices for spring lamb. Exports continue to drive weanling mart trade. Incoming Taoiseach Simon Harris sets out a stall for farmers. We profile a new state-of-the-art dairy set up in Mayo. And how to claim up to €40,000 in retrofitting grants. All inside the Irish Farmer's Journal. You cannot afford to miss it. Are you struggling with ill-fitting dentures? Are you tired of avoiding the steak menu and going straight to the softer options? Blue Poppy's special implant-assisted dentures can help restore your full bite sensation. Call today for a free consultation with Drs Ehor and Ahmed, Blue Poppy's new implant team, and explore our attractive payment plans. Find contact details for our Letterkenny and Donegal Town practices at bluepoppydental.com. Mega Value Fun Fair this Easter. All rides only £2.50, excluding Stealth Bomber and Dodgems at Ebrington Square, Derry, London, Derry. From Friday, March 29th to Sunday, April 7th. From 2 pm until late every day. Treat the family to a great day out this Easter with Collins Mega Value Fun Fair at Ebrington Square, Derry, London, Derry. It's the first sale of the season. Be quick and grab a bargain at McElhenney's. Grab 20% off some of your favourite designer brands across women's, men's, kids and footwear. You can even get up to 50% off homeware brands. Don't forget, we are also open 11 to 6 on Easter Monday. Shop in store or online at McElhenney's.com. 
Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. On Business Matters this week, I'll be looking at the expansion of credit unions with many now offering mortgages and also looking at the growth of digital payments and whether we are heading towards a cashless society. So join me, Chris Ashmore, after the 6 o'clock news on Sunday. Business Matters in association with the ATU Donegal Faculty of Business. Now is the time to realise your potential by enrolling on the part-time degree in business. Only three years with just one evening per week on campus. Open up your future by contacting the faculty office on 9186206 or visit atu.ie today. This Easter bank holiday, spruce up your home with incredible deals at Easy Living Furniture. With cracking deals such as all sofas reduced, all dining reduced, all bedroom reduced, all mattresses reduced. And if that's not enough, all our garden furniture is reduced too with an extra 10% off this weekend only. Don't miss out. Visit Easy Living Furniture, Crescent Link Retail Park or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. Kia is now making it easier to go green, offering 0% finance on the all-new Kia Nero. With an impressive 460 kilometer range on a single charge, the Nero ensures you can go the distance without compromise. Visit imotors.ie today and avail of this limited offer. Thinking of changing your floors? Why not see what Florid Letter Kenny has to offer? Florid have a large selection of solid, semi-solid, and laminate click vinyl wood flooring together with a fantastic choice of parquet, herringbone flooring, all at incredible value. Don't delay. Call Florid today on 087-161-7008. Celebrating Meatloaf, 25th September, Mount Erigal Hotel, with American Idol winner Caleb Johnson and Meatloaf's original band, The Neverland Express, perform Bat Out of Hell in all its entirety and other hits. Tickets on sale this Thursday, 10 a.m. from Mount Erigal Hotel Reception and Ticketmaster.ae. Celebrating Meatloaf, endorsed by Jim Steinman and Meatloaf, presented by Joe Gallagher Entertainment. This is the Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. It's the Friday panel on a Thursday uh, with Donal, and we're joined on the panel by Gronya Hines, a member of Letterkenny Active Retirement, uh, Councillor Kieran Brogan, uh, Letterkenny Milford MD, Fianna Fáil representative, and Mary Hart, broadcaster and journalist. Just a couple of your comments before we go any further. What about the cervical check scandal and the overspend on the children's hospital that Simon Harris oversaw? Instead of giving him a pat on the back, we should be calling for a general election. The government's been nothing but a disaster for the Irish people, as was stated by Michal Martin when he said the country wouldn't be best served by a Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael government. Then he did what every other politician does and went back on his word. Caller says, I said I'd never vote for Sinn Féin, but after seeing what's happening in the country since 2005, they'll have my vote. Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael are a joke. It's time people stood up against these two parties who aren't interested in anything outside Dublin. Uh, the caller said, I think it's probably to be expected that Mary Hart would say that the overwhelming rejection of both referenda wasn't a protest against the government. It's a prime example of how out of touch people are with the people of the country. I understand. I understood exactly what I was voting for and I voted no, no. Uh, what about when Simon Harris was Minister for Health when the cervical cancer scandal hit? Now the caller says the immigration policy doesn't make sense in my opinion. People are coming here instead of to the likes of Spain or France because they get better money. Why can't we have border control like they have in Australia? And a number of people pointing out that it took 15 counts for Simon Harris to get in and, and that means he should not be uh, anywhere near the top job. Uh, let's let's go back and we're, we're going to talk to an, another issue re really which in a sense is, is an issue that Simon Harris is going to have to look at as the head of government and it's the issue of the cost of living and specifically uh, the latest announcement that there is to be a pr rise in the price of a pint. Uh, nationwide last year 51 pubs closed their doors. Um, can anything be done to lighten the load and uh, it, it just so happens that last evening uh, the cabinet uh, went another step towards introducing auto enrolment for pensions and indeed uh, restaurateurs, vintners and others are claiming that's going to be another uh, nail in the coffin for many businesses in the service industry because of the extra cost it's going to impose. Um, I'm going to go to you first, Councillor Kieran Brogan, uh, both as a political representative and, and someone who has some experience of the, 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 the service industry as well yourself. In terms of the, the latest rises, are they going to put licensed premises, uh, restaurants and, and others un, under more pressure? 
There's absolutely no doubt about that, Donald. Uh, it's been a very, very challenging time um, for business people over the course of the last four years. And I think that some people, um, the bigger companies, if you like, have seen this as an opportunity. I know a number of years ago, um, Heineken would have introduced, maybe last year, they introduced a, a price increase at the time and Diageo came out and, and they said that they wouldn't be increasing their prices. But as, believe it or not, they've increased it twice since. Um, and I think this is becoming a huge problem. I think there's a huge uh, disconnect from the challenges, the reality of what's happening in the ground by some of the bigger companies. I mean, a recent figure that I heard recently that has become in the last number of years, um, the cost of business has gone up 34 percent. I mean, you can put that down to energy prices, you can put it down to insurance, you can put it down to the, the increase in prices. And I think, to be honest, far too much control um, and the bigger companies uh, are, I suppose, if you like, been taken by too few. But what has happened, you see it in supermarket business as well. And I think that that's not good, um, too much power and control. And I think, you know, with respect to the unfortunate situation, the, the war in Ukraine and stuff, we've, we've seen that. But unfortunately, what has happened is I think some of the bigger companies are seeing this as an opportunity to increase their, their profits. And I think we need to look at the model of business because it's come it's becoming very, very challenging. And I would call on the, the drinks companies um to step back from the from the prices and indeed to maybe <clears throat> take a hit on the margin that they're getting and have been getting for some time and try and allow the smaller businesses to to survive because this is exactly going to take people away from the on trade and it's only promoting the off trade and it's going to put people into their houses and, and stuff. And we've seen a huge change in the trends. Um, indeed, the nightclubs are effectively, you know, really been struggling over the last number of years, as has did some of the rural pubs as well. But businesses across the board um, have become very challenged over the last number of years. And I think we need to look at the benefit of businesses and creating jobs, sustainable jobs, long term jobs and opportunities for many people. And I think we need to try and work through that. But the big companies need to. Uh, maybe it's something that the competition authority needs to have a look at. Uh, I think for far too long they have been looking closely at it because it's just not good enough to come along whenever you decide somebody at the very higher end decides to push a, a button that 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 could make a huge difference to people's uh, business and livelihood. Mary Hart, from your point of view, you live in Rafo. It's a town that will depend a lot on tourism, will depend on visitors and will depend on the the, the, the services industry, uh, licensed premises and so on. Something like this that puts uh, licensed premises under pressure, that, that's not going to be good news for an area like Rafo that's so dependent on, on, on that sector? Um, I don't think, uh, I wouldn't tend to agree that it would depend on, on that sector. Would depend the, perhaps is the wrong word, but there would be yeah, a, a, yeah. Large, a, um, a large proportion of... Of, of custom. Yeah, I mean, I my view, and I at the risk of sounding, um, you know, <laughs> uh, old, uh, I think it's terrible state of affairs that we're vexed about a few uh, pence being put on drink or alcohol. Uh, when we look at people in tents on the streets and uh, people who are living in hotels who should have a home, um, the drinks industry and the publicans have had their day. They've had a great time in the past. Um, why we should be uh, in a terrible uh, uh, you know situation that oh it's terrible the pubs are closing uh, why are we why is that a terrible thing when our a and e uh, at weekends are jam packed with people who are out of their heads with alcohol you take a trip down Letterkenny Main Street at, at uh, midnight uh, at a weekend and it's 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 scary to say the least uh, the courts are filled with people who's uh wouldn't be there but for uh, having consumed far too much alcohol so i do think we need to seriously look at this attitude that we have uh that ireland is all about pubs and all about drinking guinness and all about where where the irish where the, the pubs are this part of our culture they're not a part of our culture at all um and uh, i think personally uh, we should be looking at the much more serious issues uh in our uh, within our communities at the moment people who are on the breadline um, and again, going back to, you know, we do have a good country, we do have a lot of money and we do have um, a good solid um, base from which to work from. Uh, we're just not getting some of those things put together. And, you know, we need to build more houses. Uh, absolutely, the government has and local authorities. And I have to flag up one thing that it bothers me big time is that for a year and a half, there's a, 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 a housing estate sitting brand new in Rafo, empty. A state of the art mm -hmm. State of the art housing, and I don't know what what Donegal County Council are doing about that. But the, those houses have been fenced up for a year and a half, 
And I've not been able to get an answer to that. So, you know, it's to, to, to for us to be talking about uh, the price of, of a pint going up by a few pence, I think is a nonsense. That's my view. That's uh, fair, fair enough. I'm, I'm not sure the pubs that are closing are the pubs that are causing the problems uh, in terms of the, the courts and the A&E and so on and so forth. Uh, Gronja Hines, you're, have you a perspective on this? Yes, I do indeed. I agree with everything Mary has said. I really feel there are far too many pubs for a start. And um, I know in the olden days, one pub educated a whole family. Uh, the family worked in it and they did very well. As Mary said, they had a great run at it. And um, Diageo and Heineken, are there not other, um, you could educate me here, are there other companies that produce drinks that perhaps you could switch your uh, business to? I don't know. And I think uh, putting it up by nine cents is not uh, okay. Uh, that Does that mean the public has put it up by double that? So therefore they never take a hit. So the companies don't take a hit, the publicans aren't taking a hit, the only people who are taking a hit are the punters. And I just don't think it's that important. I'm horrified at the amount of drink that young people consume and their um, the way they behave when they've consumed the drink. And I think uh, this idea of pubs being our culture is crazy. I don't agree with that either. Um, I am absolutely horrified at the idea of um, nightclubs working till 6 a.m. in the morning, the problems that it'll cause, the staff that have to go there and work over that, which is not healthy to work overnight if you can avoid it. I know nurses and other people have to do it. But uh, 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 the aggressiveness that, that comes from uh, certain times after two o'clock in the morning is amazing. And it's, it's really not a good model for our children to be thinking that uh, pubs are more important than housing or um, homeless people. Uh, let's concentrate on that. Uh, when you're in a business, you have to take the hits. Um, if I'm working, uh, say I'm working privately and I lose my customers, I have to take that hit. Um, why should they be supported more than normal people who uh, are trying to struggle with the low wages? I know that pubs and restaurant businesses uh, didn't pay their people properly for many years and the rise in the minimum wage and the fact that they have to pay now for their pensions, etc., is obviously hitting them big. I know it's a big thing for them, but it is the right thing to be done. And I really don't have much sympathy for them. It's 12 minutes to 10. We'll take a short break. Sheena Noel Design, formerly the Fabric Centre, Letterkenny, is now open in Boncrana with a beautiful new studio ready to welcome you. With a vast fabric and wallpaper library, we deliver beautiful curtains, Roman blinds and upholstery. Motorised blind specialist. We have the inspiration to finish your home. Contact us on 083 3781 871 or check out our social media and website sheenanoeldesign.com for more. Are you worried about trees on your property? Northwest Forestry Services Bully Buffet are fully insured and have over 40 years' experience in dangerous tree removal, tree felling, surgery, and stump grinding. For peace of mind, call Northwest Forest Services Bully Buffet for a no obligation quotation on 91 32033. With Big Scoop Ice Cream at Kelly Steiner in Letterkenny, there's so much choice. From Bubblegum Blast to Oreo Crunch. Named after Kelly's famous robot waiter, there's loads of flavours to choose from, or you can create your own. Treat the kids and the big kids to a yummy ice cream dessert at Kelly's Diner, Mountain Top, Letter Kenny. Don't miss David James and his band this Saturday night in the Mulroy Woods Hotel, dancing from nine to eight. Come along and enjoy a great night of music. Weather grinds farmers to a halt. For more in your Irish Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. With feed costs still rising and silage running short, an emergency meeting of the National Fodder Committee is planned. Record prices for spring lamb. Exports continue to drive weanling mark trade. Incoming Taoiseach Simon Harris sets out a stall for farmers. We profile a new state-of-the-art dairy set up in Mayo. And how to claim up to €40,000 in retrofitting grants. All inside the Irish Farmer's Journal. You cannot afford to miss it. Keep out the cold, cold, cold and ring Fleming for their full range of garage doors, agri doors, insulated doors, milking parlour doors. 
Fleming, 91 48 234. Highland Radio weather updates with Ireland West Airport. You don't visit Liverpool for the weather, but it does rain goals at Anfield. Fly to Liverpool daily with Ryanair. Ireland West Airport. Don't just take off, take it easy. Well, the forecast on um, here and tell us it'll be cold today with outbreaks of rain, heavy at times, falling as sleet and snow in places. Rain becoming patchier this evening with dry spells developing top temperatures 5 to 7 degrees Celsius, possibly slightly cooler in Donegal with moderate northerly winds backing southerly and occasionally increasing fresh. Any lingering rain will clear tonight. It'll turn largely dry with long clear spells. Showers developing though toward morning. Overnight lows minus 2 to plus 1 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow largely dry with spells of sunshine, isolated showers, little Warmer tomorrow, top temperatures 8 to 10 in moderate southerly winds. The government is being called on to consider lowering the national voting age to 16. Now, the National Youth Parliament for 12 to 18-year-olds, Dáil na Nog, took place in Leinster House this week. And I'm going to ask our panel uh, if they would agree that we should effectively be lowering the voting age. I'm going to go to you first, if if I may, Grania. Um, Do you think 16-year-olds should be voting? No, I don't actually. I have dealt with teenagers a lot in my career and I actually rang my uh, granddaughter last night, she's 20, and um, I got her opinion on it and she said that they have discussed it in their group and they don't think it's right. They don't think that when they, they think what they were like at 16 and she said to me, there's no way we would have the knowledge or even the interest um, you're all at that age you're you're concentrating on your studies on your career what you're going to do uh, your leave and search your what subjects etc etc your hormones are raging and uh, it isn't a great time uh, for people to have a, a level head and you're very idealistic you yeah. take up the weirdest uh, i know myself at 16 i had the weirdest ideas but then again, by, by, by the same token, and I've done a little bit of work over the years with Donegal Youth Council, and we have a young person's panel that comes in here from time to time, I'm sure you've heard them. There's a lot of them are yeah. very articulate, they're very interesting, mm-hmm. they've got something to say, and, and their argument to you would be, we're a part of this society, uh, we, we have a voice and we want to use it. Well, there is a theory that people's brains don't really develop fully till they're 25, particularly males. And uh, therefore, you are making uh, ideas on a kind of a wonky basis. Uh, So, no, I don't think so. And I think it's putting a burden on them and introducing them to problems and things that they let them enjoy their teenage years, let them develop, uh, have their weird ideas, dress weirdly, do what they want to do. Um, and let them have their ideas and it's good for them to have panels and youth mm-hmm. councils so they can give you know like gather up and chat about things and uh, submit ideas and all that but as for them to vote no I don't think so and I think a lot of them also at that age you're you're very much influenced by your parents you haven't really developed your full personality mm-hmm. and if your parents are this that or the other the pressure would be put on you to vote I have to be honest, I mean, when I was 16, if, if my parents told me to go left, I'd have gone right. If my parents told me to go right, I'd have gone left. If my parents said yellow, I'd have gone green. Just on the on principle, the last thing I would have done at yeah, 16 well, again, was what my parents told either, me to course. do. That is not a good thing either. So you yeah. have a kind of a weird, uh, it's, it's a weird time for children and uh, leave them alone, yeah. let them grow up. Kieran, uh, Kieran Brogan, and let's not worry too much about politics and what the country are doing. Exactly. Councillor Kieran Brogan, I referenced Donegal Youth Council. You you have regular meetings with them. You see them regularly. Uh, v- voting at sixteen, good or bad? Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, it's something I would fully support personally. Uh, I'm a daughter. My daughter is coming sixteen now. Malaysia and Oren was just eighteen on Sunday. And you know, the one thing I'll say of the young people of today, I think they're very, very bright and intelligent. They have a mind of their own as well. I think that's all changed. I think the education system we have is one of the best in the world. And I think we should be listening, engaging more with the young people. And the engagement that I have with them, to be honest, they're a breath of fresh air. They're really good. Uh, and I think we need to we need to take them on board. So I would fully support um, giving them a vote uh, at 16 years of age because, look, they're the future and we need to let them at it. Mary Hart, I'm going to give the final word on this one to yourself. Uh, voting at 16, you obviously would have had a lot of political knowledge and involvement at 16 given the household you grew up in. <laughs> Do you believe you should have had a vote at that point? Mary, you're, you're muted there, if you don't mind just uh, un- unmuting yourself. 
sorry, Mary, we can't actually hear yeah, you. Sorry, oh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Lovely. Um, I, yeah, I, I would have been the one that would have challenged my father a lot when I was 16. I'm with Grainne on this one, and I, and I was a former teacher, and I had teenagers myself, and I taught teenagers, and um, they are idealistic, but they're not all idealistic. We do get the nice idealistic ones on the panels and on the, you know, yeah. being part of party groups and all that. I do think they're far too young. They cannot possibly understand uh, the economics, the macro and microeconomics of political parties presenting you with. I, I just find there it's uh, it's just too young. It's just too young, and you know, I'm um, you know I'm, I remember as as uh, I think all of us would when 21 was the age that you voted at. So you know, 18 I think is is just about right and, and idealistic and very bright young people, but not all of them are capable of making a good value choice when it comes to politics they might be good at everything else but certainly i don't think it's the right thing and the right choice and that brings our thursday panel to an end uh, broadcaster and journalist mary hart councillor kieran brogan and active uh, retirement uh, member and uh, campaigner Gronya hines all of you thank you very much indeed for your perspectives uh enjoyed that chat i always say when i do this show uh, usually on a friday but uh, the panel is the fastest hour of the week and it's always it's been an absolute pleasure to all of you thank you very much indeed we're going to go for a break before the news and obituary notices but before we do go for a break, break i want to just let you know that if you have a ticket for our 10000 euro home makeover draw uh stand by because we're going to have a draw later on in the programme. There's an extra €5,000 in cash to be given away. It's going to be given away in two tranches of €2,500. It's going to happen today and it's going to happen next week. At quarter past 11 this morning, lines will close. At half past 11, we'll be making a call and somebody will be winning €2,500. So if you haven't got a ticket already, you can get a ticket now by contacting us on 074 912 You can get it online on highlandradio.com. And if you do that before quarter past 11 this morning, which means you have about an hour and 15 minutes, if you do it before quarter past 11, you will be in the draw and you could be €2,500 Euro richer by half past uh, at half past 11 this morning. There'll be another chance Friday of next week to win €2,500 and then later on you will have the chance to win that €10,000 home makeover that's courtesy of Foy's in uh, Foy, Foy and Company um, I think I, I, they are Foy's of Balabafay aren't they? Yeah, I think they're in Balafay. They have a, a place in Letterkenny as well. And if I'm wrong, I do thoroughly apologise for that. Um, but uh, that's the, the home makeover draw. Uh, that is available and, and that's what's happening at the moment. So, um, yeah, you can get in touch either on highlandradio.com or you can contact us uh, at Highland Radio over the phone 074 912 As I said, news and obituary notices coming up. We'll be with you after those. But right now, we'll take a short break. Love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life, says old Mr. Brennan. That's why our family pan bakers make such great tasting bread. Is that so, says I? Well, put it like this, sissy. It's the slice pan people love eating too. But it's not just the taste. It's the pure satisfaction you get from our famous bread, baked fresh each and every morning. However you slice it, anything baked is better with Brennan's. Today's bread today. Are your small appliances due an upgrade? Irwin Expert Electrical, your ultimate destination for all things electrical. From stylish toasters and kettles to innovative coffee machines and air fryers. Or elevate your tech game with our selection of smartwatches, iPads, laptops and phones and TVs from all your top brands. Stay connected with Irwin Expert Electrical, Letterkenny and Boncrana. Are you suffering from chronic pain? Letterkenny Medics are now offering specialized pain medicine services. Our expert, Dr. Anil Patel, is now taking appointments for tailored care and comprehensive pain management advice. Discover relief from persistent back and neck pain, post-surgical discomfort, or explore advanced treatments like nerve root blocks and more. Call Letterkenny Medics on 074 920 and start your pain-free journey today. Letterkenny Medics. We listen if you want to talk. Testing, testing. Do you need to get your hearing tested? Test your hearing with a free sample hearing aid from Hidden Hearing. Order your free sample hearing aid today. Call 1-800-370-0000 or visit hiddenhearing.ie. 
Bluebird Care are currently recruiting carers and nurses across Donegal with immediate starts available in Letterkenny, Ballybuffet, Inishowen and Donegal Town areas. Your career with Bluebird Care starts here with new attractive pay rates, travel assistance, paid training courses and ongoing career progression opportunities. Why not contact Bluebird Care on 074 91 29562 or learn more at bluebirdcarecareers.ie. Bluebird Care, more than just a career in care. Get ready to hit the links with McGurk's Golf Letter Kenny. Explore a range of clubs and clothing from TaylorMade, Callaway, Under Armour, Jay Lindbergh and more, as well as Trackman Custom Fitting. Special offer, mention Highland at checkout and receive 10% off when you spend €75 Euro or more. Offer ends the 1st of April. T's and C's apply. Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app. This is Highland Radio News. Good morning, I'm Michaela Clark with the news at 10 o'clock. Prayers have been offered for a Donegal woman and her two daughters killed in a road crash on Tuesday. 47-year-old Una Bowden and her daughters, 14-year-old Kira and 9-year-old Saoirse, died when the car they were in hit a truck on the N17 in County Mayo. They were remembered at a service in their local parish at the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Mike Cullen last night. Una's husband and the girl's father, David, was working abroad when the tragedy happened and is on his way back to Ireland. Adrian Devan knew Una and the girl as well. When we got the news late on Tuesday evening and it filtered around, it just caused uh, a numbness in the village. Supports have been set up to date with grief counsellors, with the schools and the clubs for all uh, parents, teachers and um, and friends. The village is asleep, the, 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 my Colin and, and the wider community in Galway. And this mass has been said. Donegal County Council's Fianna Fáil Whip believes the difficult task for Simon Harris as he prepares to take on the role of Taoiseach will be working through the programme for government with his home party rather than his coalition colleagues. The current Minister for Further Education was announced as the new Fine Gael leader at the weekend. He's expected to be announced as Taoiseach after the dull Easter recess. Councillor Kieran Brogan expects Minister Harris will work well with Micheál Martin and Eamon Ryan. There seems to have been a good level of trust and understanding um, with the three leaders over the, since the formation of this government, uh, to be fair. So he probably will fit in well to that, the fact that he's been at the cabinet table with them for some time. So I suppose the challenge may be his own party more uh, than the other leaders at this mm. point in time. And I suppose every party wants to put their own stamp in government. But the programme for government is there at the moment. And, and, and I suppose that's what they're going to work through. The 100% Redress Party has announced another local election candidate. Joy Baird will contest June's elections for the party in the Bonkrana electoral area. She has been a defective concrete block campaigner for over seven years and was one of the co-founders of the Redress focus groups. Ms Baird says while the defective block crisis will be top of her agenda, she also wants to tackle other issues that matter. Children's Charities Fear Department of Housing figures due out this afternoon could see an increase in child homelessness recorded. Bernardo says the government must take immediate action to address the growing number of children living in cramped and poor standard emergency accommodation. It warns homeless children can't develop appropriately and struggle to walk or crawl due to a lack of space. Bernardo CEO Suzanne Conley says this evening's homeless figures should be a wake-up call. Well, we're anticipating that they will be, but they, obviously they're, they're extremely serious as they are. They may increase, but even if there's a slight decrease, because people might be, you know, temporarily gone out of the country or something, that doesn't that doesn't matter. A slight decrease doesn't matter in the context of the, the vast number of children, teenagers and parents who are experiencing this degree of harm at the moment, and the government knows that. Over 267,000 euro in funding has been announced to develop and upgrade nine outdoor recreation projects in Donegal. It's part of a 4.1 million euro fund unveiled by the Minister for Rural and Community Development today. Donegal County Council, the Initial Development Partnership and the Donegal Local Development Company will receive a share of the funds for the creation and upgrading of trails across the county. Minister Heather Humphrey says the projects will be a huge boost to local communities. Each project will receive up to €30,000 and this funding will be used to enhance outdoor amenities such as our walkways, cycleways, lakes and beaches. The health benefits from being outdoors combined with the tourism benefits 
are well recognized. So as the evenings get longer and hopefully the weather improves, I would encourage everyone to get out and enjoy the natural beauty of our rural countryside. A car has been seized in Donegal after the driver was suspected of having a fraudulent driving licence and insurance disc. On Tuesday, while on patrol, the Letterkenny Roads Policing Unit were alerted to a vehicle having no insurance. The car was subsequently stopped and the documents inspected and it emerged they were fraudulent. Items were seized along with the car. Gardaí say investigations are continuing. They're warning motorists to never drive without insurance and to leave the creation of official documents to the correct relevant bodies. Weather now cold today with outbreaks of rain, heavy at times and falling as sleet and snow in places. Rain will become patchier this evening with dry spells at developing. Highest temperatures of 4 to 6 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with an update again at 11 o'clock. Until then, you can keep up to date with the latest local news on our website, highlandradio.com. Good morning. The obituary notice says for this Thursday morning, March the 28th. The death has taken place of Edith Rebecca Catterson, Calhoun Convoy. Her remains will repose at her home from 2 o'clock this afternoon. Funeral leaving from there on Saturday afternoon at half past one for two o'clock funeral service in St Patrick's Church at Donamore with burial afterwards in the family plot in the adjoining graveyard. Family time plays on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only, donations in lieu to the Oncology Day Unit, Letterkenny University Hospital, care of any family member. The death has taken place of Eamon Mullen, Portnabla, Dunfanahy, County Donegal. His remains will be reposing at his late residence from 12 noon today. Funeral service in Holy Cross Church, Dunfanahy, on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Burial afterwards in the adjoining graveyard. Mass can be viewed live on mcn.live. Family time from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock and on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only, donations in lieu if desired to the Lake House Nursing Home, care of any family member or James Harkin, funeral director. The death has occurred of Nora Brown, Nay Gallagher, Main Street, Carrigans. Nora will be reposing at her sister Joan McGee's residence to Mill Park, Carrigans from 3 o'clock this afternoon and all day tomorrow. Rosary each evening at 8 o'clock. Funeral cortege will be leaving to Mill Park, Carrigans at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, going to St Bathan's Church, St Johnston for 11 o'clock funeral mass with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family flight only place donations in lieu if desired to the Friends of Letterkenny University Hospital or Cancer Care West, care of any family member or Kelly's funeral directors. The death has occurred of Tom McPartlin, Brookfield, Donegal Town, County Donegal, formerly Drumcarran, County Leitrim. Tom's remains will repose at his late residence at Brookfield, Donegal Town this afternoon from 2 o'clock until 9 o'clock and tomorrow from 2 o'clock until 9 o'clock. Remains will leave his home on Saturday morning at quarter past 10 for a funeral service at 11 o'clock in St Patrick's Church at Donegal Town with burial immediately afterwards in Clark Graveyard. Family flowers only, donations if desired in memory of Tom to the North West Hospice. House private on Saturday morning please. Tom's funeral mass in St Patrick's Church can be viewed live on MC Live. The death has occurred of Dominic Boyle, Strat Castle, Glendies. Dominic's remains are reposing at his late residence. Removal from his home tomorrow morning to St Connell's Church, Glendies, for funeral service at 11 o'clock, with interment afterwards in the local cemetery. Family time tonight from 11 o'clock until 10 o'clock. Funeral service can be viewed live on churchservices.tv. The death has occurred of Winnie Sweeney, Nay Strain, Ronnie Hall, Kinkashla. Her remains are reposing at McGlynn's funeral home this afternoon from 2 o'clock with Rosary at half past 8. A private removal will take place afterwards to her late residence. Funeral mass tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in the Star of the Sea Church Annagree with interment afterwards in the new cemetery. 
The death has taken place of Magella Gibbons, West Town, Malin Head. Her remains are reposing at her home. Removal from her home on Saturday morning at half past 11 to the Star of the Sea Church for funeral liturgy at 12 noon, followed by burial afterwards in Lag Cemetery. House private from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, please. The death has taken place of Eileen McTagg, Derry Art Creaselaw, formerly of Helensburgh, Scotland. No wake, house private place. Cremation service will take place at Lakelands Crematorium, Dublin Road, County Cavan, this afternoon at half past three. Family flowers only place, donations in lieu if desired to the Donegal Hospice, care of any family member or James Harkin, funeral director. Cremation service can be viewed live on churchservices.tv. The death has taken place in London of Brendan Cairn, formerly of Fatima, Glen Carr, Letterkenny. Funeral service followed by cremation in London. The death has taken place of Kenny Lina, Moyle Hill, Milford, reposing at his home. Funeral mass this morning at 11 o'clock in St Peter's Church, Milford. Burial afterwards in Tully Cemetery. Funeral mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv. House private pleas to family and neighbours. And the death has occurred in Liverpool of John McDaid, 19 Lockview, Bunkrana. John will be reposing at his family home this afternoon from 2 o'clock. Funeral from there on Sunday at 12 noon, going to St Mary's Oratory, Bunkrana, for half past 12 Requiem Mass with interment afterwards in Cockhill Cemetery. Funeral service can be viewed online at churchservices.tv. House private from 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Family flowers only, please. For family information and more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. with 20 meals for under 20 euro. That's right, mighty meals every weeknight for a family of four for under 20 euro. How about spaghetti and meatballs Monday or Tuesday sizzling vegetable stir fry? There's chicken steak, potato wedges and carrots, plus chicken oyster thighs, butternut squash mash and peas. And Friday's favourite, fish, rice and munch too too. No vouchers, no apps, no messing. Follow the path to lower prices. Go all Aldi. The county's number one talk show, the 9 till noon show on Highland Radio. This is the 9 till noon show on Highland Radio. It's Donald Kavanagh with you on the programme on till 12 noon today. Now, it's a Thursday, as we say, but uh, we don't have a 9 till noon show tomorrow. So we had our Friday panel 24 hours early in the first hour. So what I'm going to do now is just give a very quick run through the main headlines on the papers because we won't have a chance obviously to do them at another point. So the Donegal News this morning, mother calls for a memorial on site of tragedy. The mother of Leona Harper, one of the 10 people killed in the Creasley disaster, says she's horrified to learn of plans to rebuild commercial units on the site of the explosion in Creasley in October of 2022. Donegal Democrat, the main story, Rufo woman and two daughters killed in Mayo crash, a story you'll have heard on the news, obviously. Also making a stand, 1,200 attend defective blocks meeting. A picture from that meeting on the front of the Chirconnell Tribune uh, showing the extent of the crowd and the main headline, ringing endorsement for people's document. Derry News this morning and the main story questions raised whether New McGee Task Force can deliver newly established task force aiming to increase McGee student numbers but a campaign group, the Derry University group is uh, questioning whether or not the task force will be efficacious. Irish Independent this morning a string of tech firms snubbed Foley meeting on child online safety several social media and tech companies snubbed a meeting with the Education Minister at a meeting last month about keeping children safe online and a heartbreaking photograph that's on several papers this morning. Mother and daughters killed in horrific Mayo crash had been visiting relatives. A mother and her children who died in a road traffic tragedy in County Mayo had been returning home from visiting family in Donegal. Una Carlin Bowden, 47, and her daughters, Kira, 14, and Saoirse, 9, were killed instantly when their vehicle collided with a fuel lorry on the N17 near Clare Morris. The same photograph on the front of the Irish Times, main photograph there. Um, and the main story is motorists set to face congestion or clean air zone charges and then the other main headline mother and two daughters in fatal Mayo crash named. The Irish Daily Mail again the same photo on the front with father makes 10,000 kilometre journey home after death of his wife and daughters 
um, and the main story, higher taxes for bigger cars. Eamon Ryan reveals 35 proposals to cut use of vehicles, such as reducing insurance premiums for people who drive less. The Red Tops, Irish Daily Star this morning, Mums to Angels, the same photograph, and Irish Tug fights for Putin Mog, a far-right English tug holding an Irish tricolour is fighting for Russia in Ukraine and Irish Daily Mirror again N17 crash horror loving smiles together forever the same picture of Una and her two daughters and the Irish son this morning's dad crash agony as family all killed the Irish Farmers Journal main story is weather grinds turnout and field work to a halt and also a really nice shot of a tractor caught in very heavy rain in Strat- Rathmore, Stradbally County, Leash as tillage farmers struggle to get their field work done. And that's the front of the Irish Farmers Journal. Don't forget, by the way, it's a Thursday, which means uh, on the uh, Half Five News this evening, at around about 20 past five, we'll have farming news and views with Chris Ashmore. Uh, but that's the way your papers are looking on this Thursday morning. <laughs> Daily newspapers are courtesy of Kelly Centra and Diner Mountaintop Letter Kenny, winner of Best Family Dining at the Highland Radio Hospitality Awards. We're going to go to the bingo numbers in just a moment. Before we do, uh, just want to let you know that uh, there is a bonus Easter egg on our Easter egg hunt today. iMotors have been taking us on a hunt for Easter eggs all over this beautiful county of Donegal and we'll be giving you clues as to where the iMotors team have travelled to begin with a chance of winning a €500 Euro uh, Ryanair voucher. All you have to do is send us an image of the golden egg or a selfie with the egg to our WhatsApp number 086 60 25000. The person who finds the egg will be entered into the draw uh, at the end of the week, which is tomorrow, obviously, on the uh, Naughty Alarm Clock. With well, it will be with Marty Friel. Uh, four lucky people will win a 100 euro one for all voucher. One will win the 500 euro Ryanair voucher. Now, earlier this morning, uh, the iMotors team were in Dunfanaghy and uh, James and Elsie Poots found the egg there. We do have a second egg today because it's Holy Thursday and the team travelled to Letterkenny in a Kia EV6. They left the golden egg at the Letterkenny Park somewhere near the entrance. All you have to do is find the egg and send us an image as quickly as you can. Hurry, because there is only one egg. So it's at the Letterkenny Town Park, the Bernard Midlinchy Town Park, to give it its full name. And the egg is somewhere near the entrance. So if you can find the egg somewhere near the entrance, then you uh, can be the uh, entered into the draw. You will at least get a 100 euro one for all voucher. And you could, you could win that 500 euro Ryanair voucher. Now the time on Highland Radio, 17 minutes past 10 time for the Vision Ireland Highland Radio bingo numbers. So grab your books, grab your pens and we'll hand you over to Joe. It's time for Vision Ireland Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Thursday, March 28th. Playing on a pink sheet, reference number is S4, it's game 13. Today is jackpot day. The jackpot number is 54 and must appear as one of the following 10 daily numbers. Today's numbers are 61 76 2 65 4 31 6 69 21 and 45. Phone your claim to 9104833 before 8 tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book. And we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your Vision Ireland bingo information at highlandradio.com. It's time to travel again, to feel nervous again, to go where they go and roar them on again. Rise again this Sunday in Croke Park at the Allianz Football League Finals. Armagh face Donegal in the Division 2 Final at 1.45 and Derry take on Dublin in the Division 1 Final at 4. Advanced ticket sales only at GAA.ie or selected centre and super value stores. GAA, where we all belong. 
looking for that Brooks experience? Try the new range at bmcsports.ie. New Ghost Max, Glycerin 21, or the Adrenaline GTS 23. Step into our safe size experience so we can fit the best trainer for your foot. Let us make your trainer experience the best it can be. Brian McCormick Sports, Main Street, Letterkenny. Are you an absolutely huge fonter or a zoom inner? Perhaps you're an arm stretched out like a zombie when holding a newspaper, or or a squint so tightly at the menu the waiter thinks you're sleeping, or at Specsavers, we get it. You don't want to admit it's probably time to become a glasses wearer, or that's okay. We're ready to see you whenever you're ready to see properly. Book an eye test at specsavers.ie so you can see clearer, or okay, we'll stop with the errors now. It's the 9 Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. It's Donald Kavanagh with you on Till 12 Midday today. Uh, we will have a lot of uh, discussion on the programme. Just to remind you, by the way, uh, those tickets are on sale. You now have 55 minutes to get a ticket in our home improvements draw and you can pick it up on highlandradio.com or you can uh, ring the station and... Uh, buy it over the phone. However, I can tell you the phone lines have gone fairly mad this morning so uh, if you can do it online you'd be maybe a little bit better doing it there. Um, and there'll be a, uh, a call made this morning there'll be a draw at about quarter past a draw at half eleven, sorry, draws at half eleven and after the draw then we'll be calling someone and they will be two and a half thousand euro richer. Uh, there'll be another chance to win two and a half thousand euro next Friday Friday of next week and then uh, the following week I think it is uh, the €10,000 home improvement voucher from Foyce will be drawn for so uh, plenty of opportunities to win there Okay, I've got some very uh, important guests in studio to whom I want to introduce you uh, because we're speaking about Donegal Horizons today Uh, it's an important initiative and we have two trainees uh, with Donegal Horizons in studio with us we have Max Max, good morning morning. and we have Porik Uh, Porik, good morning to you very good morning. And it's Porik Dugan and Max Leenans, and we're also joined by Seamus Friel, who is Senior Key Worker with uh, Donegal Horizons. Uh, Seamus, good morning. How are you? Um, it, it's a very in- interesting and uh, important uh, initiative because educating people to work is really important and uh, both both our trainees are, are getting on just fine. Max, I'm going to go to you first because you're, you're working in Abergababra at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, now, I mean, I have to be honest, it's a, it's a place I do know well. You'll tell by the look of me, I am no stranger to this, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to the delights of, of, of a place like Abra Um And you're, you're enjoying the work? Yeah. What what does it involve? Like cooking, helping like customers as well, bringing food to them and helping around. Yep, so you're doing the cooking yourself as well, which, yeah. which uh, and that's a really important job. And I have to say, I, I, I've never had a bad kebab out of out of that particular premises, so take a bow because you're obviously doing your job well. Um, Porik, you're, you're training as well. You were on the National Learning Network. Now you're in Donegal Horizons, and uh, you, you're really getting into it. Yes, I am. Mm. Uh, a, a, a big sports fan? Yes, I'm. And I see you're now signed up for a Special Olympic soccer, so we're going to be seeing you competing far and wide in the, 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 the years to come? Yes, yes, yes. Excellent, look forward to that. Well, I, I do join it, really, because I get on with more pals on the Special Olympics. Brilliant. Um, what, what position do you play on the team? Uh, mostly striker. Oh, very good. The, the one that gets the glory, that, that's what we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> what, 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 what's your score rate like? Uh, well, you could say 100. Okay, hello, sorry, just make a call here. Hello, is that John O'Shea? Uh, listen, I have a guy for you. Uh, so, will, will we see you go across the water and sign up for one of the big teams over there? Probably, yeah. Well, you could say Manchester City or Man United or something. Oh, my Manchester City or Man United. Who, who, who'd, who'd be your preference? Probably Erring Hand. Oh, so you're a, a, a City fan? Yeah, I'm a City fan, yeah. Oh, fair enough. But you, you wouldn't have any problem playing for United, no? No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if they give you the money, you'll pay for <laughs> it. <laughs> That's the, do you know what? That's exactly the mindset you need to be a professional footballer. I think yeah, you're yeah. going places. Um, Max, I want to go back to yourself. Uh, you and Podry were both involved in a coffee morning recently, which was really important because uh, you made a fair amount of money. Yeah. What did you make? Like, over 4,000. 4,000. 4,000 euro. 4,000, uh, and that was for Epilepsy Ireland. Yeah. And you're a big sports fan as well, yeah? Yeah. What, what sports? Like Gaelic football, like 
Anything that's Anything. going. Yeah, if, <laughs> if, if it involves balls and moving, you're, you're on top of it. Balls running. About. Yeah, are, 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 are you like me? Are you the sort of sports fan who sits down and watch somebody somebody else do it? Or are you like poor and get out and do it, do it yourself? Do it myself as well. Oh, you do it yourself <laughs> as well. Oh, that's, what, that's what we want. True. Um, now, you're, you're both taking part in classes and, you know, numeracy and literacy, obviously very important. But, uh, oh, I see you're both involved in uh, music and dance classes as well. Yeah. What, what, what sort of dancing? Like, we do... Like, well, we do like uh, be, be, we we do a bit of but we do music like mm-hmm. a karaoke. Oh, like we good. do sort of country western and dancing as well too. And so is the dancing the sort of jiving? Um, yeah, it's sort of jiving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can say that, yeah. <laughs> sort of stuff. Yeah, e- excellent. You know, are you gonna give us a few bars? Well, you could mention. Well, well. Or, or, or do we have to be in a bar first before we, we go? We have to be in a bar first. Yeah. <laughs> a few Guinness, a few pints of Guinness. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Shemes, I'm going to go to yourself because obviously Donegal Horizons is it, it's a very important project in, in the county and, and it plays a really important role. Definitely, yeah. Um, we actually have two centres in Donegal. We have one in Carndonagh too, and we have about 20, 22 trainees up there, and we one here in Letterkenny and we have about 28 mm. so it's basically we would, uh, teach life skills and stuff we got there and just make sure they're out in their community as much as possible and mm. it's it's really a good project and we're we're enjoying it and having a bit of crack on the way yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so Max what, 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 what's he like to work with you can tell us if you want to <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's talking about he's, 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 he's trying to think of something nice to share. So I, I'm 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 sure he's 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 good crack to work with. Look look at the lovely smile and face. Yeah, you couldn't but love it. In fairness, now that's come on. Ah, uh, well, that's it. Not everyone says that. No. <laughs> oh, is he a bit of a tyrant when no one's looking? <laughs> oh, I love it. Um... Porik, in, in terms of work, work experience, obviously, you know, you're going to end up playing for Man United uh, and, and you'll be a professional mm-hmm, footballer mm-hmm. and not knocking in 100 goals at will, just yeah. like Erling Haaland, no, no problem at all. Yeah. So, you know, we, we don't have to worry about, you know, ordinary yeah. boring jobs. But if you were to do an ordinary boring job, what would the ordinary boring job be? Well, mostly I just sit about the house playing video games all the time. Yeah, you're, you're not supposed to be honest, Porik. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, obviously, obviously I just quite <laughs> say, like... But obviously, I go shopping with my mother and yeah. father. Yeah. To get out of the house. Well, hey, that 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 that, that is important. It, it's really important to be doing things like that. Uh, Max, you're holding your hands to your face over there. I mean, is, is there a place in Abercrombie you could drag him in and get him to do some proper work? Uh, there's no room for him. <laughs> <laughs> Max, oh, hang on, I'm onto a good thing here. James. Don't, don't complicate things, please. <laughs> Um, Seamus, I mean the 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 work experience uh, in ensuring that all 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 the trainees are are you know where where they need to be and, and where where it's best for them to be. It, it it's an important part of the job, I'm sure. Uh, massively, you know, and it's like Max. One of his main goals is he wants to be a chef mm-hmm. at some stage, and working in Abercabra is great for him, and he loves it over there. And Jason, the manager in Abercabra, yeah. is absolutely brilliant. As is. All of our placement providers, you know, we have yeah, we have ones down Fanet or Patricia down Fanet Care of the Age, has one of our trainees, and then Veritas as trainees. We have loads of um, placements mm-hmm. out there, but obviously we're always looking for more. Mm-hmm. So if anyone wants to yeah. take on one of our trainees, and and both, free. yeah, and and both Park and Max, both of you are going to. Um, Go on a, a training session with the FAI with uh, Finn Harps. Yeah, yeah. yes, that's yes. going to be interesting. Tell, yeah. tell, tell us uh-huh. about that. Well, we done it uh, on Tuesday, and we absolutely liked it uh, because, like, we were training mostly skills and how to yeah, pass the ball, like. pass the ball, mm-hmm. and get on to other train other people. I was like, yeah. including the ones in Cairn Donna and the ones in Shaban. Yeah, so you, you you've done the training now with the FAI, and then the 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 inclusion camp then with uh, Harps comes up. That's a bit later in the year, is it? Yes, that's a bit later in the year. That's yeah. on the it starts on the eleventh. Oh, the eleventh, which yeah. is let me see if I can get this right. That is this day fortnight. The day fortnight. Hey. <laughs> <Stay fortnight, yeah. laughs> Kevin, I got something right. <laughs> and um, it's 
the programme is going to be delivered by myself and Stephen McNutt, mm. who is the social responsibility officer with Fun Harps. Yeah. Fun Harps have been brilliant. We were actually up at a game. They invited yeah. us up to yes, a game. Yes. Yeah. And I took Podrick and Max and, and a few other trainees, trainees yeah. Sean and Ellen, up to. And they absolutely loved it. And they got pictures with some of the players and the manager. Mm-hmm. And couldn't have treated us any better and, up there. and I'm sure the lads were standing in the in the stand waving the scarves and, and being oh. nice and quiet yeah, and yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of noise unfortunately they got beat that day well they got that beat that day yeah, yeah. So. they were playing cool but hopefully oh, we'll get up to oh, another game you and just have to go back to, what, to a game <laughs> they win. but you mean in fairness Porrick you, you, you might play for Harps for a bit Porrick before you go across the water just well <laughs> you could say that I was just saying to Jamie oh, do you think I'll get a squat like Finn Harps and probably you'll never know I might get him to Finn Harps well, but if you're scoring 100 games a year, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Get, get them promoted. <laughs> no, get promoted perhaps, yet. perhaps the 100 goals might have been a slight exaggeration. Perhaps, <laughs> yeah. was it? Maybe, yeah. maybe just a little bit of an exaggeration. Probably just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that's taking place in... Um, it, 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 and it, it, it's an important one, Max. You're, you're obviously looking forward to it. Yeah. Do you play much f- football yourself? Yeah. Do you play with the team or just uh, about at home and with, 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 with your... Pals. Well, I also like with the team as well. Mm-hmm. Which which team? Special, special Olympics. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Uh, special Olympics as well. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, and and that's so right. So two members of the Special Olympics soccer team. I mean, obviously you're going to be playing locally, but I mean, you know, it's an important business, Special Olympics, mm-hmm. and there's mm-hmm. going to be. We saw here now. Year way too young to remember all this. As he's probably way too young to remember this. In fairness, I mean, I'm I'm sadly not too young to remember it. But when the national, or the international Olympics were in Croke Park, I mean, it was a huge Special yeah. Olympics buzz right around the country. Um, and I remember people like Sean Bradley were winning medals down there at that point. Um, yeah. Now let, let's just say Sean has a four in his name in, in his age now, so we won't <laughs> won't go there. But you know, it's it, it's a huge thing, and you could find yourselves tra- traveling the world if, if you can make it onto the Irish team. And obviously, Por- Porrick's a shoe in. Would you uh, have ambitions there, Max? Get yeah. onto the national team? Yeah. Absolutely. Why, and why not? You really should. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying the chat, lads. Uh, in terms of, 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 of where it, it goes from here, Max, you want to f- do your work in Abracababra, but you want to be a chef yourself. Yeah, I should have. I mean, are you talking about going beyond the, the burgers and kebabs and going into a, a, a kitchen and doing, you know, meals a, a, across the board? Yeah. What 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 would be your favourite sort of food to be to be looking toward? Uh, pizza maybe. Or he's good. At, he's a very good cook now. Oh, I've I've I've, I've no doubt. I've I've noticed. He helps out in the centre there. We do a lot mm-hmm. of cooking in uh, the centre and oh, he helps out with the breakfast and lunches mm-hmm. and stuff we get there. And and you get to do more than peel the spuds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, here's what you do. You do the cooking, get Porrick to peel the spots. Because <laughs> he's, he's used to helping around at home anyway, so <laughs> he'll peel the spots, no problem at all. Um, yep, yeah, but do you know what? I'm really looking forward. I have no doubt at some point in the not-too-distant future I'm going to find myself in a restaurant and find that the grub that comes out has been cooked by you, mm-hmm. Max, and I'll be sitting back watching watching TV and, and there'll be Porrick uh, on the goal score, on the on the, 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 the screen, scoring whatever, six, seven goals a game, like, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and uh, all the City fans will be going, Erlen who? Um, but it's... Uh, I've really enjoyed the chat. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Is there anything else you want to say before you go, Porrick? Well, um, I was trying to look for a work experience, but uh, <laughs> I'm just probably planning to go somewhere as usual, so... Hopefully, fingers crossed. Ah, well, I'm sure they look after you. Max, yourself? Uh. You just keep on cooking and keep on, <laughs> keep on working towards it. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work. It's great. I, I, I look forward to uh, to seeing your meteoric rise in the Special Olympics team. Seamus, uh, thank, thanks indeed yourself for, 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 for coming in, in as well. I mean, it, it's really good to know that there's initiatives like Donegal Horizons out there that, that's doing this work because it is really important work as we said definitely mm-hmm. and especially for this inclusion camp you know mm-hmm. I don't think there's enough for adults with IDs um, out there so hopefully we can change that there and like so the Letter County Community Centre who's been lame mm-hmm. down there has been very good to us and helping us out with us here too and hopefully we get big numbers and we can hopefully make it a bigger and better thing in the future Yeah we've just had a message in from Lorraine McDade well done lads for promoting Donegal Horizons great facility especially for the people in Inishon can't praise it enough 
the lads would be going, in a show, and I, I, I've heard of that place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that, that's way, way up north somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you're a country music mm-hmm. fan, it's, it's up, 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 up north toward Alaska. And yeah. that, that, that's where the show is. <laughs> well, I just want to say one last thing. So, Go for it, Corey. Um, I'm just shouting to hold to staff and Larry Kenny if they're tuning in. I'm just saying, oh, hello to them all. So, thanks for tuning in to Highland Radio. <laughs> you know what? You'll be taking my job next part. <laughs> he wants Aaron Hallam's job. He wants my job. Um, Seamus, Max. Porik, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, all of you, for speaking to us today. Thanks Thank so you. much. It's been great. Bye now. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook, and at highlandradio.com. Tuesday, 2nd of April is World Autism Awareness Day, and we can't wait to celebrate it at Century Complex. We will be having a sensory screening of Kung Fu Panda 4 in Century Cinemas at 11 a.m. before the crowds. Century Play will also be sensory friendly from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the day to let the little ones explore. Weather grinds farmers to a halt. For more in your Irish Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. With feed costs still rising and silage running short, an emergency meeting of the National Fodder Committee is planned. Record prices for spring lamb. Exports continue to drive weanling mart trade. Incoming Taoiseach Simon Harris sets out a stall for farmers. We profile a new state-of-the-art dairy set up in Mayo. And how to claim up to €40,000 in retrofitting grants. All inside the Irish Farmer's Journal. You cannot afford to miss it. This Easter bank holiday, spruce up your home with incredible deals at Easy Living Furniture. With cracking deals such as all sofas reduced, all dining reduced, all bedroom reduced, all mattresses reduced. And if that's not enough, all our garden furniture is reduced too with an extra 10% off this weekend only. Don't miss out. Visit Easy Living Furniture, Crescent Link Retail Park or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. On Business Matters this week, I'll be looking at the expansion of credit unions, with many now offering mortgages, and also looking at the growth of digital payments and whether we are heading towards a cashless society. So join me, Chris Ashmore, after the 6 o'clock news on Sunday. Business Matters, in association with the ATU Donegal Faculty of Business. Now is the time to realise your potential by enrolling on the part-time degree in business. Only three years with just one evening per week on campus. Open up your future by contacting the faculty office on 9186206 or visit atu.ie today. Share fantastic Easter moments with Lidl. Our fresh board beer approved Irish whole lamb leg, an effortless way to please the family, was $8.99, now $6.29 per kilo. Carved to perfection with our lamb joints, naturally tender and produced in Wexford. Proudly supporting Irish suppliers. Go on, go full Lidl this Easter. This is the 9 Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. Now, we're going to talk about the deposit return scheme because you may recall uh, it came up uh, for discussion on the programme yesterday. A couple of comments in on it and a few more comments came in after we closed the lines yesterday, just to give you a few of those. Someone asking, how long will it be before someone can print a QR code from a return bottle or can and attach it to an unrefundable, redeemable can or bottle? I think these return machines will go the way of the e-voting machines. I'm not going to collect a house full of bottles for a month or two just to get a few pence back. Uh, Caller says, I work in a major retailer. I have 10 bottles to recycle. One deposit returns machine in the premises isn't working. The other is full. I have to wait another week now to recycle. That's uh, No, sorry, I, they're not working there. They're just visiting there. I do apologise. Uh, there's two loads of bottles and it's also adding about eight weeks to my bill. Uh, another caller says, we had Toy Story the musical. Now we have Waste Disposal the musical. Trust me, this will be scrapped in nine months' time. No one is talking about the property each shop is renting to the government for these machines. Plus, no one is talking about the fact that all these recycle machines were imported. This government is a complete joke. Now, I am joined on Zoom by Vincent Jennings, and Vincent Jennings is a representative of the Convenience Stores and News Agents Association. And Vincent, you're a bit more uh, confident about the deposit return scheme than perhaps some of our listeners. Good morning. Well, well, I mean, I'm not discounting what your reader, what your listeners have um, experienced. Um, and yes, there have been certainly glitches and there have been upsets. But to suggest that it is going to go the way of the e-voting machines or that it will be scrapped, that won't happen. 
Um, we have an absolute need as a society to recycle plastics and cans in a fashion that is sustainable. And we were doing it um, quite well, uh, but it was only three quarters of the entirety. So you were talking about over 600 million units per year that were ending up in hedgerows and landfill and God knows where. Um, and this scheme, which is used in 40 other uh, ju jurisdictions around the world, so it's not unique, um, uh, this scheme uh, was designed in such a fashion to ensure that you would, after a period of time, um, have, if we emulate Germany and Scandinavian countries and other countries, we will have in excess of 95% of capture. Um, and it's because you are setting the deposit at a level that is worthwhile to people to bring it back or worthwhile for somebody to bring it back. If not people themselves, then through charities or through youngsters, we'll see the young entrepreneurs starting all over again, collecting and cleaning. And won't that make it great that they won't be in the hedgerows? It won't be in the dumps. Well, I have to be honest. I did it myself when I was a young lad because when I was growing up, you had a two pence deposit on. Yeah. I mean, there was no such thing really as cans, to be honest, because I'm old. And it was bottles. And you'll, you'll recall these days where you bought a bottle of orange or whatever in the, in the shop. The shop had a little bottle opener attached to the counter. They opened the bottle. They gave it to you. Uh, you you drank the bottle. You brought the bottle back and you got your two quid, you got your two pence back. Yeah. And yeah. I, on more than one occasion, did go around. You'd find a bottle and hey, and if you managed to find three or four bottles while I was walking, but that was, you went to the shop, you got six pence and you, you bought a couple of pennies, toffees or whatever. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a good point. It's a, it's a different situation now because then it was quite simply, you went to the shop, you bought a bottle, you were given your bottle, you drank your drink, you gave the bottle back, you got your two pence. It was very straightforward and very fluid. Now we're talking machines, we're talking barcodes, we're talking a situation where, you know, people can find themselves in a situation, for instance, a lot of our callers yesterday were saying that they bought a can or they bought a bottle, they were charged the the tax, but then found there wasn't a return logo on it, and when they tried to put it through a machine, they were being told this isn't eligible. And that apparently has happened in, on a few occasions and in a few places. Yeah, and look, I mean, any person who has themse has found themselves, in, and I've heard of that as well, um, uh, any person who has been charged a deposit uh, and they know, they know absolutely that they were, they will most certainly receive their deposit back. You go, you shouldn't have to kick up a fuss or anything like that, but you go to the customer service place of the shop that has the return, uh, the return in place um, and you make them aware. Look, I mean, I paid a deposit whenever it was. Um, now, sometimes you may well buy two or three different items and you would have been charged a deposit on one of them or, or, or two of them, but not all of them at the moment. Um, although all of the stock coming through since the 15th now will have um, uh, deposits levied into the retailer. So they will be retur They will be retailing, but there's still stock in place. By the end of, of May, there will be no more stock. Well, even if there is stock in place, hmm. we can't sell it because by law, we will have to... Um, we will have to ensure that the only products that are being sold from the 1st of June have the return logo. Um, and that will be for all time. And we, we are talking about something that's going to be there in 2025, 26, 29 and onwards. This is, of course, there are glitches in the, in the, in the transitional period, but they're not fatal to the scheme. The scheme is well considered and we will have extra jobs that will come from a recycling centre that, mm -hmm. that base itself upon the product that we have reclaimed within the island of Ireland. That would be great for Ireland. In terms of the machines themselves and their maintenance, are you confident that there will be long-term maintenance of the machines? We're already hearing of issues where, uh, I mean, the, the two major retailers, uh, both Tesco and Dunn's, we've heard of issues with the machines there. Now, cards on the table. I've used the machines in Tesco and Letterkenny on about three occasions. I haven't had any issues. For others, that's not their experience. Others have said they arrived and they found both machines weren't working properly and, and they couldn't uh, put their uh, cans through. So... Uh, are we going to see proper maintenance of the machines? Are we going to see regular maintenance? And are you confident that it will be a matter that we will see that continue? Or are we going to get to a point where the, sy the system may become, for want of a better word, dilapidated and tired after a while and eventually machines will just start to wind down and not work properly? 
Well, don't forget we are talking about, you're talking about two people. They wouldn't be members of ours, but Tesco and Dunn's would be very, very hard taskmasters. They didn't make the machines, but they bought the machines. Mm. Some of them have, have, expend, uh, have yeah. spent in excess of €100,000. That's an investment to them. They will absolutely crack the whip and they will be absolutely sh- assured that they will get either a replacement or they will they will sit on guys uh, over bank holiday weekends and be like, they are hard taskmasters. And you can be absolutely sure that if they're paying for something, they want the value for, for themselves and for their customers. It's an embarrassment to them when it's down. That's for sure. Yeah, For, for the majority of your members, of course, it's going to be over the counter. And are all retailers offering an over-the-counter service or how is it working? Well, that's an interesting one insofar as that uh, that was the original plan that there would be an over-the-counter. But we embraced the idea of the machines. There was only supposed to be 700 for the entire country. And then convenience sector ran in and said, no, 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 no. We actually want to be part of this as well. So there are now 2,200. So in other words, there's 1,500 extra machines throughout the country. And that is primarily our members have actually stood up to the mark. And whether they're centres or spars or Londis or Gala or, or, or whatever, they have stood up to the mark and they've gone out, out of their own pocket. They've bought these machines because they do not want to give business over to or be considered that somehow or other the only place where you can where you can return stuff is an Aldi or a Lidl or a Tesco or, or the like. You know, we're equal to them. And the only the, the biggest difficulty about this scheme is the fact that it's not it's not north and south. It should have yeah. been north and south. But unfortunately, politics got in the way and the northern representatives refused to have something to do with an all-Ireland scheme. And is that potentially an issue for your members here? Because, and let's, again, cards on the table, one one or two of our callers did say, I'm going to head across the border. I mean, where I'm sitting at the moment, I'm 25 minutes from an Asda, I'm I'm 30 minutes from a Sainsbury's and uh, numerous other shops where I can where I can buy cans, I can buy bottles and yeah, don't have to worry a, about deposits at all. There's an anti-fraud measure in it insofar as that they all now have different barcodes. So north of the border, south yeah. of the border, different barcodes, won't accept it, has spent a lot of money, extra money in doing this. Didn't have to be done if the North had done it. But, you know, there have to be anti-fraud measures. Somebody spoke about printing off a QR code and the like. Look, uh, there will always be people, no matter where, there will always be people who try to game a system and and Mm. the like. That's the same as shoplifting. And they but I'm not talking about gaming the system. I'm talking about instead of giving no, their no, customers no, no, to their local your, shop, one, people will yeah. go across so the border, is, buy their drinks there and then I chuck them in the no, recycling no, no. bin. That's perf- it's perfectly acceptable mm. that they make their purchase wherever they like. Yeah. But they, obviously, if they hadn't paid for a de- uh, paid a deposit, oh, yeah. they can't redeem. No, one of your listeners had spoken about printing off a QR. Oh, the QR, yeah. Saying, well, that, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I'm, and what I'm saying is that that has all been taken care of. Yeah. And if they do attempt, that's a, an attempt at fraudulent conversion and they will be prosecuted. Cute. Yeah, Cora says I have a designated reusable shopping bag for my bottles and cans. I bring it on my weekly shop to get the deposit back. I've never been so good at remembering my shopping bags. Um, it's an interesting <laughs> point, actually, because, I mean, you know, I mean, could, could could you imagine someone going into the shop with a couple of cans, putting the cans in, getting their uh, thing from the machine, and then and then actually forgetting to redeem it, which is exactly what I did last week. So I have a, 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 a token of me wallet right now, actually. Yeah, it never, it never, the shop by the way, just on weekend. that one, it never loses its value. Oh, yeah. It's there for all times, yeah. as long as it can be read, it will be honoured. Yep. Yeah. Um, Vincent Jennings, uh, it, you you are confident, uh, as you've said, then you believe there, there, there have inevitably been some teething problems. I know uh, figures came out last week which suggested that the, the uptake wasn't as strong as it was initially hoped it would be. Now, it, it's always, I suppose, there's going to be a fanfare and uh, maybe people didn't quite understand the scheme as well as they thought they did. I know certainly there was a discussion at Donegal County Council level just days before it came into effect and uh, the the concern was that maybe people knew there was a scheme but weren't so um, clued in as to how it was actually operating. In terms of if we want to find out where there are machines in our locality, what's the best way to do it? Is there a central website we can find all that out or can we just assume there's one in our local centre or our local spa? Well, I think you can certainly assume that there's one in your local centra. Um, and the, the, but there is a map. There is an interactive map. You just key in what your own postcode is, and it will show you uh, in proximity to where you are those ones. And as I say, there are 2,200 around the country, so you're never too far from one. Though it is obviously a matter that um, we would prefer if there was a, a facility in every in every outlet, mm-hmm. handing it over. 
uh, without a machine is a real difficulty, logistical difficulty, uh, and it is a difficulty for our staff in being able to identify potentially fraudulent ones yeah. and also handling product that's been in somebody's mouth. That's not what you want. So we've 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 we, we've applied for and received exemptions in those instances. Vincent Jennings uh, of the Convenience Stores and News Agents Association, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. That's Vincent there. Uh, We'll take a short break. Back after these. Have you entered our €10,000 home makeover draw? If the answer is yes, then you are now automatically entered into our extra cash giveaway. If the answer is no, then now is the time to enter. Greg Hughes will be ringing one lucky person on Thursday the 20th of March and again on Friday the 5th of April, giving you the chance to win €2,500 each day. Giving you the chance to win twice. That's not all. You will still have the chance of winning in our main draw of a €10,000 home makeover in association with Foy and Company. Plus, €5,000 in cash. Get your ticket now at highlandradio.com. Imagine the possibilities. Craving a taste of bliss by the water? Dive into deliciousness at the water's edge in Rathmullen. Our coffee and snack bar offers a daily dose of freshness and flavour. From scrumptious light bites to tasty snacks and freshly brewed coffee. Served daily from 10am to 3pm. And delicious fresh pizza served daily from 12pm. See you soon at the water's edge. Refresh your shoe wardrobe with the latest arrivals from Green Shoes, bringing you the latest styles from top brands such as Riker, Birkenstock and Wonders. Also, New Balance, Bugatti, XTI and many more. Step into style this season with Green Shoes, Market Square, Letterkenny Shopping Centre and Volcara or at greenshoes.com. One for all and shop LK cards accepted. I hear you some wire and needs a fixin', ma'am. The name's Buzz. On account of my work. No chance. Not all cowboys ride horses. All safe electric registered electrical contractors must give you a certificate of completion that shows their work meets approved standards. Find one nearby on safeelectric.ie. Make great photos into beautiful gifts at McGee's Chemist Letterkenny. Different gift ideas include canvas prints, freestanding or ready to hang art blocks, and personalized photo books. Perfect to mark any occasion. There's also jigsaws, calendars, mugs, and much more. For details, visit mcgees.ie. Turn your favourite moments into something truly special with McGee's Chemist Letter Kenny. A Highland Radio weather update with Ireland West Airport. Time to book that business trip to London. Fly daily to London Stansted and Luton with Ryanair and London Heathrow with Aer Lingus. Ireland West Airport. Don't just take off, take it easy. Well, the forecast and Met Aaron tell us it'll be cold today with outbreaks of rain, heavy at times, falling as sleet and snow in places. Rain becoming patchier this evening, dry spells developing top temperatures 5 to 7, possibly slightly cooler in Donegal with moderate northerly winds backing southerly and occasionally increasing fresh. Tonight, any lingering rain will clear. It'll turn largely dry with long clear spells, some showers developing toward morning. It'll be cold though, top temperatures overnight of minus 2 to plus 1 degree Celsius with some frost and ice forming in light southeasterly or variable winds. Tomorrow starting largely dry spells of sunshine Just a few isolated showers More frequent showers though spreading in from the south in the afternoon Heavy at times Top temperatures tomorrow 8 to 10 Again some light to moderate southerly winds Let's uh, just remind you that we will uh, in about 40 minutes time At around about half past 11 Be calling one lucky person after a draw is made Katie's just been inside Putting all the numbers in the draw drum So we'll be drawing a number uh, Along with Sean at about half past 11 Then that person shall be called Called and we'll hopefully take them on air and break the good news that they've won at two and a half thousand euro. It's all part of the ten thousand euro home makeover uh, plus extra five thousand cash giveaway. Uh, the draw is um, you can go on to highlandradio.com or you can call us on 7491 to purchase your ticket. Uh, we'll be calling, as I said, someone today on Friday of next week. Greg will be calling someone. Um, with the same uh, purpose of giving them two and a half thousand euro and then the following week it'll be the draw for the ten thousand uh, euro home makeover and of course the winners today and next Friday will go back into the drum so you could theoretically win all three uh, statistically that's probably not likely to happen but it could it's absolutely possible that it could happen now I just want to give you some of our comments that we spoke on the uh, Friday panel earlier about the question of 
uh, voting ages. And a caller says, I'll be 16 next month. I have an interest in politics. I'll vote when I'm of age. I don't think the voting age should be lowered. Young brains are so easily manipulated. That's according to one of our correspondents. Let's look at some other of your calls. They should do a deposit return scheme for wine bottles and beer cans because the roads are a mess with them. They're all on the roadside. It's not working. Well, beer cans are included. Uh, I know certainly your standard 500 or 330 uh, milliliter beer can is included in the return scheme. So if you see them on the road, you can always, as I used to do when I was a kid, pick them up, give them a quick clean and bring them in and you can redeem the cash on them. Uh, Tron Ross and Car Park in Downings is very dangerous, says a caller. Since the 21st of January, the fence has been broken. At the fence, there is a big drop and it's dangerous. People need to be aware of that drop, especially younger kids, when people are going there for their Easter holidays. We were discussing Simon Harris and his imminent um, going to be Taoiseach uh, later on uh, in April and he is... um, I want to go back to that comment because I'm just told actually we referenced Michael earlier on and uh, we can actually talk to Michael because Michael's on line one. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Donal. How are you doing? Um, you are, you're, you're interested in politics yourself but you don't necessarily believe you should be voting at 16. No, I don't think uh, most 16-year-olds are mature enough by voting. Um, most 16-year-olds are still in full-time education and are still living with their parents. Yeah, because I'm and, and I, I I made this point earlier. Okay, I was hugely interested in politics when I was sixteen, and yeah, I mean I was rebelling against my parents a bit. I was rebelling against society a bit, and um, I was wearing badges on my jackets going to school. And the badge the badges said things like "Reject Reagan's foreign policy." Uh, Re- Reagan was the U.S. president when I was in secondary school. Um, that that's how long back we're talking. But you know. Um, but by the same token, I sometimes think, are we doing people like yourself a disservice? I mean, it isn't as though you're immature at 16 and then suddenly at 18 develop a socially conscious brain. I mean, there's a lot of people in their 20s are a lot less socially conscious and a lot less mature than some 15, 16-year-olds I know. Oh, I, I know what you're saying there, but um, I do see a difference in maturity of a 16-year-old compared to an 18-year-old. Okay, can I, can I then turn it around a bit? Should there be, say, we have things like here, we have the Donegal Youth Council and we have other initiatives. There's Dolan and Nog as well, of course. Should we have something in place whereby the county council or the Dáil nationally should be paying more attention to the youth councils and paying more attention to Dáil and Nog and perhaps have some sort of a way that the youth councils and, and the youth parliaments can get their views on a more streamlined way into the councils and into the Dáil? Because, I mean, okay... On 16 year olds and under you know they mightn't be fully uh, mature politically and socially but they still have something to say I can see value in that yet hmm. Michael th- thanks for, for speaking to us um, it, it, it's an interesting point um, I, I certainly as, as I said I know there's there's probably a lot of 16 year olds that would be very interested and, and we certainly have had some of them on the panel here and there's someone put me to shame with their maturity and, and their knowledge and so on to be honest with you but listen thanks very much indeed for speaking to us this morning and uh, all the best with it and Thank you. Uh, all the best that, that, that's Michael there um, it's the 9th of noon to on Highland Radio it's uh, two and a half minutes to 11 just to remind you after 11 we're going to be previewing and uh, looking at some of the finalists in our Community Hero initiative that Highland Radio has been uh, working on for for some time. Sean, it's going to be a very busy hour for Sean, actually. He's going to be in with us on the the Community Hero slot and then he'll be in as well uh, with the draw. But before we do anything else, we'll just take this short break. At Screwfix, you can click and collect over 10,000 trade products in as little as one minute. So whether it's sockets and swords or radiators in Roscommon, when you need it yesterday, just click at screwfix.ie and collect at your local store seven days a week. T's and C's apply. Visit screwfix.ie for full details. The CFC Interiors Dairy Stock Disposal Sale starts Easter Monday. Due to renovations and incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discount on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Campsie Dairy starts Easter Monday. 
tired of waiting for treatment or surgery? Did you know you can receive immediate treatment across the border under the new NI planned healthcare scheme at potentially no cost? Donegal patients are still being treated with us at Kingsbridge Private Hospital Northwest post Brexit. The process is easy and our dedicated team will help guide you through it. So why wait? Contact us today to find out how you can skip the waiting lists and receive treatment in Northern Ireland. Visit kingsbridgeprivatehospital.com because life matters. Did you know Tinny's Toys stock top toy brands like the Care Bears, VTech, Leapfrog, Lamaze, Playmobil, Tonka and much more. We also have a massive range of outdoor toys like swings, slides, swing ball, goal posts and rebounders. And don't forget, we're still Ireland's largest farm toy superstore. Open Monday to Saturday, Leck Road, Lettergenny or online at tinnystoys.com. Attention job seekers. Atlantic Technological University is looking for dynamic individuals to join our team of administrative professionals across our campuses in the west and northwest of Ireland. We are looking for individuals to form a panel of grade 3 and grade 4 administrative staff to fill posts across the university. Enjoy competitive pay, a supportive work environment and the opportunity to grow your career with us. Find out more at atu.ie forward slash jobs. Mega Value Fun Fair this Easter. All rides only £2.50, excluding Stealth Bomber and Dodgems at Ebrington Square, Derry, London, Derry. From Friday, March 29th to Sunday, April 7th. From 2 pm until late every day. Treat the family to a great day out this Easter with Cullen's Mega Value Fun Fair at Ebrington Square, Derry, London, Derry. This is the Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. Into the final hour, we'll be introducing you to our community heroes in just a few moments. But before we do anything else, we'll take the news headlines and say good morning, McKenna Clark. Thanks, Donald. Good morning. Gardaí have seized a number of items today as part of an ongoing investigation after packages containing over €4 million euro worth of cocaine washed up in Donegal last year. This morning, Gardaí from Donegal, assisted by Louth Gardaí, carried out searches at a number of locations in Dundalk. Gardaí say items of potential evidential value to the investigation have been seized, including electronic devices devices and documents. They say no arrests have been made at this time. Tributes are being paid today to a Donegal woman and her two daughters killed in a road crash on Tuesday. 47-year-old Una Bowden and her daughters 14-year-old Kira and 9-year-old Saoirse died when the car they were in hit a truck on the N17 in County Mayo. Donegal County Council's Fianna Fáil Whip believes the difficult task for Simon Harris as he prefers, prepares to take on the role of Taoiseach will be gaining the trust of his own party. The current Minister for Further and Higher Education was confirmed as a new Fine Gael leader at the weekend. He's expected to be announced as Taoiseach after the dull Easter recess. Children's Charities Fear Department of Housing figures due out this afternoon could see an increase in child homelessness recorded. Bernardo says the government must take immediate action to address the growing number of children living in cramped and poor standard emergency accommodation. The 100% Redress Party has announced another local election candidate. Joy Baird will contest June's elections for the party in the Bunkrana local electoral area. She has been a defective concrete block campaigner for over seven years and was one of the co-founders of the Redress focus groups. Four men have been arrested in Derry after drugs were seized during searches in the city. Police conducted a search of a property in the old fort area of Strathfoy last evening and a quantity of Class A and B drugs were seized along with a sum of cash. The men aged 20, 25 and 54 were arrested on suspicion of a number of drug-related offences and remain in custody at this time. And over €267,000 in funding has been announced to develop and upgrade nine outdoor recreation projects in Donegal. It's part of a €4.1 million euro fund unveiled by the Minister for Rural and Community Development today. Those are the latest headlines. We'll be back with an update again at 12 noon. This bank holiday weekend, it really could be... Yahoo! That's right, there's one bank holiday millionaire guaranteed in the Lotto Plus raffle. A millionaire? That would certainly put a bit of... ...into your long weekend. So play Lotto with Plus this Saturday for your chance to become Ireland's newest millionaire. The National Lotto. This bank holiday weekend, it could be you. Play responsibly, play for fun. 
This is the Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio and we've reached a very, very important part of the show this morning because I'm joined in studio by Sean Quinn, our marketing manager. Sean, good morning. Morning, Donal. How are you? Very well indeed. Sean, for the past few weeks, you and Anya and, and Creed and others have been very busy behind the scene working on the, the Community Hero Initiative for 2024 and uh, I'm sure it's been a, a very interesting and a roaring experience. It's just been amazing. Uh, the response that we got was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we, we had over, I think it was over 220 um, letters, emails for uh, nominees um, right across the county. Um, so you can imagine that process to start with was quite difficult um, because I would say every single letter we got was, was worthy because there were people who go out to the community and they do things for people and they never look for that reward or recognition they just do it because that's the type of people that they are um so we went through a process and um we had to pick five winners donald yeah and uh we were very fortunate that um a very generous listener he gave us um a thousand euros to give away to each person and he wants to remain anonymous Mm -hmm. and which i respect but i'm also delighted that he can do what he can do for us um yeah because it just makes it easier for us to go out into the community and do this so we um we went through that process there was there was four or five of us that uh we we read all the letters and uh and we we got down to five and what i wanted to do then is to try and make it a surprise element Mm -hmm. um where we could go out to these people and um and recognize them but but give them a bit of a shock and a bit of a surprise as well. So yeah. we started the process on Monday and the team went out and uh, we we picked our, our first one was a person called Brendan Breen. So just to give you a, a kind of a background on Brendan, um, he was nominated by uh, Joan Kelly and... Uh, what Joan had basically said in the letter was that uh, Brendan was a very kind and caring person and he drives people uh, to Galway or to Dublin for hospital treatment and his car is always on the road he never stops um, and he also works with various charities um, across across the county um, and also he would run uh, uh, music trips to Galway and to Dunmore East mm-hmm. so he's a, he's an organiser, he's a, he's a helper, he's He's, you know, within the community. Um, and what she said is that, uh, there's, there's another thing that hit me with, with this letter. What Joan has said is when the traffic lights came on at the pole star, she had a real fear. She had a real mm. fear that uh, she was not going to be able to drive around the, the, the roundabout. And what Brendan did was he took her in the car on numerous occasions to drive her around to get her used to wow. actually using the, the traffic light system. And she felt at the time that she would not be able to come into Letterkenny to do her shopping, but she he helped her overcome that fear. And that's the type of person that he was. Mm. So what we did is we we, we, uh, we wanted to surprise Brendan. So through uh, through Joan, what we did is we set up um, we set up a lunch that they have four times a year. So we set it up on, on Monday mm-hmm. in backstage in Letterkenny. So poor old Brendan had no idea that we were coming along with a camera. And they had just uh, ordered their their starters, or their, I think their main course. Mm-hmm. Um, when we landed them with the with the actual camera, so I don't know if we are we ready to play. I think yes. I think we can go now. This okay. is the uh, busy video. man on the phone here. Hello there. Is this Brendan? Is it? That's Brendan. Is this Brendan? Hello. How are you, Brendan? I'm very well, thanks. Yeah, wondering what am I? Sean Quinn here from Highland Radio. Right. Um, you're here for your lunch. But yes. we have a bit of a surprise for you. Oh, lovely. Because you've been uh, nominated by your dear friend here, Joan, and you've been successful as one of Highland Radio's community heroes for 2024. So I have some good news for you, right? Lovely. You're a right. hero. Yes. But we also want to reward you as a hero. Oh. So but courtesy of a, a friend of Highland Radio's, he donated money for us to help people in the community and to reward people in the community. So we actually have a cheque for you today for €1,000 that Brendan is going to spend on himself for a change oh, instead of spending on everybody else. So even that fills the car with petrol for the next 12 months, um, then this is yours, Brendan. Oh, God, I'm blown away. And this is all due to you. Yes. And, then, and she's buying lunch as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I can't believe it. Two in the one day, yeah, huh? That's fantastic. Thank you. For, I really appreciate that. That, 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 that's lovely Sean um, I, I love I mean given the amount of travelling Brendan appears to do just supporting the community uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure a thousand euros go to see Scarfield for a year <laughs> absolutely not and do you know what it's it just it, it's I think it, Brendan will just keep doing what he does because he's that type of person yeah. and uh, and you know he probably won't even spend that on himself that will go elsewhere um, but I, I hope that it does and I said that to him you know just make sure that uh, you treat yourself for once because you're always so good to help and helping others. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to uh, to Margaret Coyle next. Uh, no, it's, well, it's, uh, we haven't gone to we're going to Margaret. Yeah, so Margaret is uh, she was nominated by Rose Donny, um, and she again Rose she she, she wrote a beautiful letter a letter about Margaret. Margaret has worked tirelessly within the, the community for twenty one years fundraising and I'm going to name a few of the charities but trust me Donald they're, yeah. they're endless like she's worked with uh, Donegal Hospice uh, the RNLI uh, We Care for Food Bank Hope International MS Ireland Autism and it goes on yeah. and on um, she's a very uh, she's quite a very quiet lady um, every December she uh, picks a charity and what she does is she puts together a hamper at her own cost mm -hmm. and she goes across the county and she sells tickets for it and that's what she's been doing for years and years. Um, but she's also an avid runner, and she's run numerous marathons, uh, endless half, uh, sorry, one marathon, I should say, and endless half marathons, and a load of 10Ks, and they're all for charity. She isn't, she has no fear in her either, because uh, she's done something that I would never do. She took an ab sale of Crow Park, and also Smithfield Tower. Mm. So, uh, not for the faint-hearted, let me add. So, and this is all in need of charity as well. What Monica said is that uh, in her letter, Margaret is a very caring and faithful and honest person who goes out of her way to help others. And what we did is we surprised Margaret at her house. And what I did, I was a bit on, I, I, I told her she had been shortlisted, but she hadn't actually won. Yeah. And I wanted to, to, to do is to just have some questions with her. So what we did is we, we, we landed at the house, but uh, what Rose did behind, uh, Rose came in behind and she actually had the check with her. So oh, if you want to play the audio there. Yep. Tell us some of the charities that you've helped in over the years. Well, some of the charities overall in 21 years of fundraising for different charities, basically my first couple would be um, uh, the likes of Donegal Down Syndrome, um, Donegal Hospice, Little Blue Heroes, uh, Fall Search and Rescue. Okay. And what have, what have you done for those charities? I would have, I hold a Christmas hamper draw every Christmas and every year different businesses around the town give me prizes and I I uh, do raffles and all the money is given to the charity. Right. Who's this behind me, I wonder? Congratulations. <laughs> Who have we got here? Rose Donaghy. Hello, I'm Rose. Manager. How are you? <laughs> so we've, we've kind of got you a little bit. So we have, because you weren't shortlisted. You're actually one of our winners, one of our five winners, been recognised as you know, a community speak. hero. Why is she a community hero, tell us? Margaret never looks for anything. She does this, as the word, selflessly every year. And she does more than this. I could have written another three pages about her easily. Yeah. And she deserves it all, so she does. And that was Rosemary there speaking about Margaret. Uh, it must be lovely, Sean, to actually get the chance to do that sort of thing. Uh, do you know what, Donald? I've, I've done some great things in here, but this I think this week's been uh, the best week because to go out and talk to five people who just just help others yeah. and, and to be able to give something back. And that's what they do all the time, give back. And to be able to go to them and uh, and do that this week, it's, it's just been brilliant. And their they're, they're faces, uh, like I'm, I'm going to go on to, to Monica Guia yeah. now because this to me was, this is just a pivotal one because Monica has been, she's been working in the community, uh, the Lady Academy Community Centre for 30 years. Um, and she she's deaf. So you can understand that yeah. she's, she, she has challenges. Um, but that's never stopped her. Uh, in, in the 90s, she started a live wire camp for kids. Mm -hmm. And she's now looked after thousands of kids over those years. She even got involved in gymnastics. And um, she, set up, she, she helped to set up a Jumpin' Jacks uh, Special Olympics club in 2000, and, uh, I think it's 2011. Um, and she helped actually to train uh, kids 
to beat records, um, to become better people. And that wasn't enough for her. What she had to do then is she looked and she set up 10 years ago um, a lung rehabil rehabilitation group um, at the centre. And this class basically ran twice a week. And it was for people that were uh, struggling with COPD, uh, had heart disease, arthritis, um, and some of that had come out of surgery. So she's a, she's a real Trojan and, and she gives up a lot of her time uh, to others. Um, so her daughter kindly wrote in a lovely letter and uh, we thought, what would be the best way of going presenting this to her? Let's go right in at the end of her class. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was amazing because we actually met a, a gentleman who was 91, like he was 92 years of age and he was at an exercise class. And what he said to me, just made my days, is that without it, he would not be here because what it's helped him to do is to recover, but also the social aspect. He's met other people, he has that cup of tea. And it's because of Monica that this happens and it's grown over the years. And this, as I said, they're celebrating 10 years and getting stronger and stronger. And what a thing to have in your community to be able to know that a couple of times a week you can go out and you can meet people. And that's what Monica has done. So if you want to play a little yep, at the absolutely. surprise. Hello, is this Monica? Monica, how are you? Sean Quinn here from Highland Radio. How are you? <laughs> now, why am I here standing in front of you, Monica? <laughs> you have been nominated and you'll be successful and you're a winner of the Highland Radio Community Hero Awards for 2024. Oh and here's, here's your daughter here. She's got a lovely cheque for 1,000 euros. So you're working in the community centre for 30 years, is that right? I have indeed, I have indeed. And you've also been involved in gymnastics. Uh, you've helped kids to break records, the Special Olympics. I have. And you're a, a hero of the community. And everybody around here has just wants to say well done to you. Oh my goodness, you couldn't think of how to do this with. These people are amazing. And, and this they, is what makes the community centre. And guess what? They think you're amazing as well. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's really, really lovely. That was Monica there um, in, in, in the, the community centre. And yeah, I think you're right, Sean, that, that, that one was special. It was. And the, 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 I think there was about 50 people at the class. So obviously mm -hmm. the, the, the community centre were in it as well. So they made sure that there was extra people yeah. there on the day. But, you know, just even the cheers, they came in with a lovely cake for her, the balloons for mm -hmm. her, but just the reaction from the people, Donald. Um, it, it, the, she means so much to people in there that what she does for them and, uh, you know, again, it's lovely to be able to, to go out and recognise that and say, Nora McGlynn, you are a hero. You know, I think one of my, uh, my, my two kids did that live work class back in the day when that, that she started. So thanks, Monica. They gave us a few hours free over, over summer holidays at one point. Sean, we're going to take a quick break. We just got a little message in, by the way. Thank you, Sean and the Highland team. Monday is a day we'll never forget. And that's from Rose Donaghy. So uh, thank you, Rose, for that. That's lovely. Uh, we're going to take a short break back after these. The county's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. Enjoy a special Easter Sunday lunch at the Radisson Blue Hotel, Letterkenny. Let the Radisson team spoil you with a sumptuous four-course meal, which is $34.95 per person. A kid's menu is also available, from traditional Sunday roast options to an array of delicious desserts. Reserve your table today by calling 91 94444 and make it an Easter Sunday to remember you, um, at the Radisson Blue Have you family Letterkenny. around you to help you? Invite the family over for a fantastic Easter dinner with Lidl. Our award-winning board be approved deluxe Irish Angus topside roast with sea salt and black pepper, only eleven ninety nine. All our tender beef joints are matured to perfection and produced in the heart of Cavan. Proudly supporting Irish suppliers. Go on, go full Lidl this Easter. Revamp your style at Evolve Clothing Letty Kenny Retail Park and EvolveClothing.com. Easter sale alert. Massive discounts on all stock. Homeland Letter Kenny's Garden Super Saturday Weekends are back starting this weekend, Saturday 30th of March. Chat with our experienced Homeland Garden Centre team and enjoy exclusive offers in store, including buy five, get one free on flower and veg seeds, organic vegetable compost, buy three for two, and organic grower greenhouse, now €199, Euro, save €100. Euro. All this and so much more. For details, see homeland.ie. 
The Fabric Centre Letterkenny has moved to Bunkrana. The Fabric Centre has rebranded as Sheena Noel Design with a gorgeous new studio ready to welcome you. Delivering the same curtains, Roman blinds, upholstery and services with the same talented team. Contact us today on 083 3781 871 or check us out on social media or our website SheenaNoelDesign.com for more. Meet the Easter Bunny this Saturday at Timmy's Toys in Letterkenny. From 2 to 4, there's face painting and some great Easter treats for all the kids. For a family day out, join the Easter Bunny this Saturday at Timmy's Toys on the Lake Road in Letterkenny. The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio and we're in the middle of unveiling and honouring our five community heroes uh, Sean is with me in studio and uh, Sean got the, the lovely job of going around to the various winners with the cheques and uh, informing them that they'd won. Uh, Sean, our next is Nora. Yeah, so I uh, I I alluded to Nora just before the, mm -hmm. the break there by mistake, but... Um, no, no, it, it was a teaser, Sean. That's what it was. It was a teaser. <laughs> just, to, just before the break. A trailer. Yeah. Very, good, will, yeah. Very good, Very <laughs> good. So, yeah, so Nora McGlynn, and she was no nominated by her good friend, Marion Gallagher. Um, so Nora is she's been living with Parkinson's for seven years and um, so that's a daily struggle in its own and, and unfortunately she's had uh, family tragedies in her life over the last number of years um, no more so than losing her husband just before Christmas so I, I was very touched by the letter that uh, that Marion had written um, Nora takes 20 tablets a day for, for various illnesses and um, it's fair to say that she has good days and bad days. So um, what I wanted to do, I wanted to surprise her, but I wasn't sure how do I do that because it could have been a bad day. Um, so with our friend Marion, what we did is we decided that we'd go up and we'd do an interview on living with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And it meant that that day, if it was a bad day, that she could still, she would be able to talk to us about the bad days. But the whole essence of it was we were there to present her with a community hero check. So... Um, what we did is I, I landed, and, and thankfully, it was a good day. Um, and what I understood from from uh, about Nora is that she's. It doesn't matter whether it's a good or bad. She is there for everybody. And the one that hit me is, she actually goes on a bus to Dublin, and to Lisburn, to go and babysit for her grandchildren. That's the strength mm -hmm. that this yeah. lady has. She's also there for people in the community. She's there. If you're ill, she's the first person to be there with a dinner for you. She's an avid cleaner, as I saw in the house. She, uh, the house is immaculate. But that's the pride that she has mm. and the fight that she has on a daily basis. And that's the type of person that she is. Nothing with phase her. Um, she was very nervous when I met her, but she was able, she, she was able to, to, to start to tell me about um, her life, you know, her life with Parkinson's. But when the camera went off, we got the real story. And that to me is important too because, and I don't want to share that because mm -hmm. that's her story. And, uh, and, you know, the tough years that she's had and the struggles and the loneliness. But she's got a lovely family around her and I was absolutely delighted to be able to surprise her and, and give her a community mm -hmm. cheque for a thousand euros. Excellent. Let's have a listen. Have you, um, have you family around you that help you and, yeah. and they support you? And Carolyn, the girl you met. And her, that's, she's married to my uh, uh, son, and they just live up the road. It's her two little boys, and then a girl, a boy. And I must say, they're brilliant. They're very, very good now. Only for them, I would be. Okay. Now. Well, I have a wee secret for you, because yeah. only for you, yeah. uh, if you look to your to your left there or to your right, you'll see that we have actually got a little presentation for you today, because I know quite a bit about you, Nora. I thank you. Do you know more? <laughs> <laughs> Because I got a lovely letter from Marion yeah. to tell me all about you. Yeah. And you're actually one of uh, Highland Radio's community heroes because I know that you've had Parkinson's for, for seven years, right? Yeah. But it hasn't stopped you being a good person. I'll try. I believe that you, you jump on a bus and go to Dublin yeah, and you yeah. go to Lisburn yeah. to do babysitting. Yeah, well. You go and help people in the community. Oh well, they might be that good guy. <laughs> and you're a very. <laughs> Marion, 
wrote a lovely letter outlining to how good you are to other people. Man, you're, ah? you're making me tears come. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's lovely, thanks to a, a listener, what we have, we, we're, we're out in the community this week yeah. and we're giving back to people who are never recognised. And yeah. I think you're one of those people that oh. needs to be recognised. Beautiful. Yeah, a, a, a beautiful person, just a, a, a nice, uh, a nice person, um, and it was yeah, it was very touching, and so deserving. Um, so we're, you know, we're absolutely delighted, and you know that that was one of the easy ones because we knew everybody that read that letter knew yeah. that that was a special person. So, um, so moving on to the last one, don't know it was um, Seamus McLaughlin in Bunkrana was nominated by what I would just call as a character. Um, mm-hmm. I. I, when I opened the letter, I was just so moved by it. And it was from his friend, Tom. Um, and Tom is 91. And he, he just, he, he wrote a lovely letter about Seamus, his neighbour and his friend. Mm. Uh, and what Seamus does for him and, and what he means to him uh, is, I think, is the, the, the part of the letter that, that struck me. So I rang Tom just to get more information. And uh, he was just so charming. Um, and so appreciative of his neighbours um, in the Bunkrana area. So the, the gist of it is um, Seamus is very good to him um, and, and Seamus doesn't even realise this because Seamus does it because Seamus wants to do it. But um, Tom, at his age of 91, obviously there's, there's health issues there from different times. But at any given time, um, Seamus will put Tom in the car and drive him to wherever he needs to go. And that could be Sligo, it could be Galway, it could be Letterkenny. And at the moment he's going through an eye infection with every four weeks, mm. he has to go to Sligo. And Seamus is there and he takes him in the car and he sits all day, as you, as we know, you give it an 11 o'clock appointment, you might not get seen till three o'clock. Mm-hmm. And they make a day trip of it. Um, so Tom is so appreciative of that. And, and, but also it's the daily call and it's, do you want anything at the shop? Are you okay, Tom? And it's the camaraderie in the company that uh, that Seamus provides and he's become part of the family and part of the community um on a whole but you can see why because he's he's a gentleman um who is so appreciative of what people do for him but Seamus is an extraordinary person too because he devotes his time to others he, he's involved in in charity work as well um he he helps in the uh, meals and wheels to try to actually deliver them and he's raised over seven thousand euros in, for charities as well over the years a very unassuming person and, and so I thought how do I surprise this guy um, I have to involve Tom so what we did is we arrived at Tom's house first and we had Seamus's wife in tow so she knew about it so we landed at the back door of the house with Tom on my arm to to announce that Seamus was a community hero and we had a cup of tea afterwards and we had a great chat about the, the, the community that they have in Bunkrana and it's very special. And I think Seamus McLaughlin is one of those, is part of why it's special. Is this Seamus, is it? This is me. Seamus McLaughlin, do you, do you know this guy here? Ah, uh, I do indeed. This is the bold Tom. But the reason we're here today is Tom actually sent us a lovely letter to, uh, to Highland Radio. And uh, what we've been doing, we have a Community Hero Awards for 2024. And he wrote a lovely letter about you. And, and do you know what? You're one of our community heroes and we're here today to just congratulate you. Tom, tell me why did you nominate Seamus? I nominated him because he really took me under his wing. Even cut his time between himself and his wife, you know, to, to, to facilitate me, mm-hmm. go to Sligo, Galway, Letterkenny, you mention it, he was there. And it's, <laughs> is there, I, I suppose it's also fair to say that because of what Seamus does, it just makes your life so much easier. What? I wouldn't be here without him. Yeah, yeah. I really wouldn't be here without him. So, Seamus, how does it feel to be a Highland Radio community hero? Uh, I'm <laughs> chuffed, absolutely chuffed. <laughs> well, Tom yeah. lost his wife yeah. six years ago, so, you know. Yeah. And I go swimming four times a week in the pleasure centre down there, so I made it a habit few years ago to oh. just drop in yeah. and if Tom needed milk or bread or anything, yeah. 
you know, it's, it's no hassle because I'm shopping for myself, anyway. Yeah, but it's just it's what neighbourhoods are all about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And you you're, 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 also, you're a busy man because you've been involved in charities, you've raised money yeah. for Concern. I believe you're on the Tidy Towns uh, committee as well. Yeah. When I read Tom's letter, I was very touched by it. And immediately I rang him, and uh, I'm delighted that, that, that we've managed to get here today to say that you are one of Highland Radio's community heroes for 2024. So very well done. I wouldn't be here without him. I mean, hey, that that that's a statement. That's the line of the week, mm. and and it was from the heart as well because that's that's factual, Donald. Yeah. You know, he's he's so appreciative of what Seamus does for him, um, and the community because the uh, up and right the around Pillar Park area. They're very good. To, they're, they've got a very tight knit community, and you could see that as well, mm -hmm. and you could feel that. But um, yeah, that that kind of it left. That that was the last one we did yesterday, and and uh, you know you had that feel good factor in your heart going back up the yeah. road because um, you know you'd kind of made a little bit of a difference. But it's it's not about what we did this week. It's about about what people continue to do within their communities, and I would extend it to say keep doing it because what I saw this week is smiles on people's faces because people care and people help we're only acknowledging five people here we yeah. i would love to have acknowledged 150 people because they're all worthy of it and i say please keep doing what you're doing because it makes such a difference to these people to these communities yeah. to these services and uh and these are just a pick of five um i also want to thank the team for this week as well the work that's gone behind the scenes um we're going to we've captured videos yeah. So what we'll do is we'll post them on our social media. Um, I think you'll enjoy them. I think there's warmth, there's laughter, but there's a message there that that Karen, Karen is everything. And I think that's that's demonstrated by our five winners this week. And finally, Don, I just want to thank that mystery person. That mm, person absolutely, who, who yes. has helped us because it just made it all happen today. And he knows who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and if he's listening, I just want to say a big thank you. And he's seen the fruits of of, of that today, and and I think it is very um, wonderful to see it. As he said, Sean, the the videos are going up on 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 social media, and they'll be there for all to see. Um, now we're going to get our value out of you today. Okay. Because you're now Sean Quinn, Community Hero Coordinator, has left the building. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sean Quinn, Highland Radio Marketing Manager, <laughs> is going to be uh, with us. We're going to take a short break, and in a few moments, I think it's fair to say, Sean, we're going to make another person very happy. We're going to make somebody very happy with €2,500. Don't go away. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. At Aldi, get Easter off to a cracking start with value that saves you shelling out. In store now, medium Easter eggs including Nestle Smarties, Cadbury Buttons and Mini Eggs and Gronia's Hot Cross Buns, now only 99 cent. From March 25th, up to 20% off premium wines. And from March 26th, board be a quality assured 100% Irish full lamb leg, only 6.35 per kilo, save 29%. This Easter, follow the path to lower prices. Go all Aldi. Get the facts, be drink aware, visit drinkaware.ie. This Easter bank holiday, spruce up your home with incredible deals at Easy Living Furniture. With cracking deals such as all sofas reduced, all dining reduced, all bedroom reduced, all mattresses reduced. And if that's not enough, all our garden furniture is reduced too with an extra 10% off this weekend only. Don't miss out. Visit Easy Living Furniture, Crescent Link Retail Park, or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. The Drumbo Annual Easter Commemoration will take place this Easter Sunday, the 31st of March, with special guest Chris McManus, MEP, speaking from the Monument on Main Street. All are welcome to attend. Please assemble at Johnston's Corner, Stranorler at 3pm. With the price of diesel rising and electricity going down, take the leap into electric with our special offer at iMotors. Test drive our selected range of used electric cars for 72 hours. If you've been hesitant about making the switch to electric, now is your chance to experience Experience the thrill and convenience firsthand. Visit our showroom in Letterkenny now to test drive our selected range and avail of our electricity card for 72 hours. Test drive our electrifying range at iMotors today. The Logan Air Easter sale is now on. Fly from City of Derry Airport to London Heathrow and Glasgow. Save up to 15% off over 1 million seats across the Logan Air network. Book by 2nd April, travel from 26th April. Subject to availability, exclusion supply. Visit loganair.co.uk. Logan Air. Your journey, our joy. 
Across Ireland, more than 1.6 million homes, farms and businesses have been upgraded to a smart electricity meter. And ESB Networks is continuing the rollout of smart meters in your area, connecting more of us to a cleaner electric future. One of the benefits of your smart meter is being able to find out more about your daily usage, regardless of who your electricity supplier is. Get started by signing up today for your online account. Visit ESBnetworks.ie. ESB Networks. Energizing your everything into the final 26 minutes of the 9 till noon show for this Thursday and joined in studio by two very important people. Uh, Sean, our marketing manager, has stayed with us. Also joined by our CEO, Fanula Rabbit. Fanula, good morning. Good morning. Now, you would normally be here at, at, at this time with Michael Leddy on the last show of the week, but of course it's Thursday, not Friday. So we don't have Michael. We're, we're not talking entertainment at the moment. Although if anyone is a science fiction fan, go to June 2. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> I was and, up half the night watching a do- documentary about... Um, Barbie's father. We all know about the woman that created Barbie, oh, but the good. guy right. that actually was the engineer. It's a very good documentary on Sky. Oh, and I was enough. like, oh, I'll have a great chat with Donald today about it. And then I got bumped yeah. for myself, yeah. which was even funnier. And, and my missus is saying that the gentleman is particularly good. She's well oh, impressed yeah, with the gentleman. It is. Yeah, she's yeah. really impressed with that. It so there, there are your two recommendations. The gentleman documentary about Barbie's dad and <laughs> uh, June 2 in the cinemas. There you go. Quickest entertainment hour ever. Right? <laughs> because we, we have important things to do. Because if you're watching, and I think we're on the guest too, are we? I'll just double check. Yes, we are indeed. If you're watching uh, on screen, you will notice behind Sean and Fanula, you will see a mm. purple... Uh, Tombola is that you call yes, them a uh, draw is. barrel thing. What's in that are thousands of pieces of plastic with black numbers written on them. Now, and re- I tell you this, it's important that we tell you this because all we have in this studio are numbers. We have no idea what names and, num- and phone numbers those numbers equate to. Katie, out in a completely different room, has a list of names and phone numbers that correspond to those numbers. And what's going to happen in just a moment is that Fnula is going to go over. We're going to give the draw the drum a good shake. We're going to pull out one number. Then we're going to uh, get that number over to Katie. Katie is going to cross-reference it against her list. And then a phone call is going to be made to a person. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to speak to that person. And they will be two and a half thousand euro richer. I didn't even need to be here, Donald. You succinctly put it all into words. They're exactly what's going to happen with the draw. But that's we're... not all, because there is more to happen after this. Fanula, over to yeah. you. No, well, no, look, at we're delighted. Just wanted to say we're delighted this year to partner with Foy's um, for a 10,000 euro home makeover. I think if anybody's seen some of our social media, people are coming up with ideas of what they would do with the 10,000, how you would do up your house. Um, I, You know, we getting it fully painted or doing up the sitting room and getting new furniture and all that kind of thing. And obviously Foy's is uh, full of ideas and they're there to help you. Uh, they can definitely help you spend that 10,000 and make the most out of it for your home so that you're, uh, you know, can uh, spend the summer just spending and doing it up. That would be lovely. Mm. And then we've also uh, included a, a cash prize that goes with that. But then, as Sean announced last week, we're delighted to put on this extra cash prizes for people over the next couple of weeks in order to, um, you know, just increase the uh, the amount of winners that our draw gets. Mm. So for the this week and next week, we'll be giving away two and a half thousand euros each Friday. So we're delighted to do that. And uh, will I just jump up and do yeah, this go one? Yeah, go for it. Why not? Here so we as, as we said, several thousand um, pieces of paper, uh, plasticky, and it's good and noisy That's as you can hear. Going That's yeah. them there. Going around there. Sure yeah. Now, well. as well, we will just stress what we're going to put out of this box is a number, and that's all we will have here. So we, we have no idea, even if we wanted to, to fix it, we couldn't, because we have no way of knowing what name corresponds to what number. Yeah. Okay. So if is going to pull out a number... I could fix it. I remember the, 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 the sweepstakes where you then you hold oh, the number in front of the camera <laughs> way back in the well, day. Well, I'm going to sit down and hold it. Two. And the winner is, because I think I'm on this camera over here. You are. 0585. So 0585 is this week's winner. And I hasten to add, this winner goes back into the draw. So they're in with an opportunity to win the 2500 mm-hmm. next week. And also, of course, in still in with an opportunity to win the big prize 
which is the following weekend, am I right? Yeah. Yep. Following Friday. Get my day Two weeks tomorrow. This Thursday, you see Thursday's throwing us here. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not going to Friday. For, yeah. for, for, for the sake of draw purposes, <laughs> we're just going to call today Friday. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just calling yeah, it Friday. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's, it is on Friday. It's a bit strange because we actually we normally launch them on a Friday. Yeah. But we launched this one on a Thursday. Yeah. So uh, because of our charity day. But now, listen, Sunday's going to be very happy very shortly. Two and a half thousand euros for Easter. Yeah, absolutely. What a time to get it. Yeah, now I can tell you, you might have seen it actually in the window I'm not sure how the reflections were working but as, as Fanula was reading out the number Katie was just outside the window no you won't have, it was a different window actually but Katie <laughs> was just outside the window and Katie was taking a note of the number so <clears throat> pardon me I can I can confirm Katie wrote the number and Katie is uh, getting that organised uh, I can see Katie actually standing beside Donna Marie Donna Marie is reaching for a phone so I think we will hopefully in just a few moments be getting a phone call transferred through to us just want to say I had a few messages in about the Community Heroes uh, congratulations Congratulations to Margaret and all those nominated. Think they're all the winners are fantastic. Well done to them all from Val. And again, big congratulations to Margaret Coyle on her award. No better lady. And that comes from Breach Boyle in Ardra. And uh, Margaret, obviously a very, very um, popular person indeed. And and why wouldn't she be after all the work that Margaret has been doing? I am happy to say I can go to line one. Uh, good morning. Do I have the pleasure of speaking to Carmel Quinn and Lentis? That's correct, yes. Carmel, good morning. It's uh, Donal here. I know the ads promised you, Greg, but you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to put up with me. <laughs> Carmel, I'm happy to tell you that uh, you do have a ticket. I take it in our whole makeover draw. I have, yes. You have. Well, I can tell you, you are now two and a half thousand euro richer than you were four and a half minutes ago. Congratulations. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> much that's brilliant yeah if you've been listening you'll, you'll be aware that there's an extra two and a half thousand today an extra two and a half thousand on friday of next week and then the main draw is in two weeks time but uh the first number that was pulled out for the uh the extra two and a half thousand today was yours so congratulations carmel you are a two and a half thousand euro winner thank you so so much that's brilliant and a happy easter to you and the family and the same to you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Happy Hello. Easter. And happy Easter to you. You take care, Carmel. That's Carmel there in Glenties. Um, yep, I think Fanula and Sean, we've made someone, for, we promised to make somebody very happy. I very think on, on the evidence. I know. Very surprised. Yeah, they were very happy. Great. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, I uh, hope she's going to blow it on something frivolous. I always think money won should be just, you should mm. blow it on something frivolous. Don't do something some, sensible with it, Carmel. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fully agree, actually. I do fully agree. Buy yeah. yourself something nice, whatever. But save save 2,000 and then blow the 500 on something cracked. Yeah. I love, or, or go, go I on love your holiday. thinking, I have oh, to say. Yeah. Or go, 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 go on that holiday or day trip you've always said. And yeah. I, I've always had this thing, I'd love to go to Cologne or I'd love to go to Reykjavik or I'd love to go to some... Go there. Yeah, yeah. I know. I've actually never been to Amsterdam and it's really definitely on my list. I've been. Um, Amsterdam is a great I, city. I know, it's supposed yeah, to be yeah. lovely for walking around. My sister it just is. came back from it and I was like, I'm going to add that to the list now. And I was there two years ago. I know. June and, 22. And Edinburgh. Wonderful. They're my two now I've got to get in 2020. So if anybody wants to give me two and a half thousand, I would be delighted to accept it to allow me mm. so that I can go on my city breaks. Well, if you want anyone to keep you company, <laughs> I, I'm sure I can find a weekend free. Perfect, Donald. We're throwing it out there. If anybody would, yeah. would like, we could do that. What is that program where they go away for the city breaks? You know, on TV, they have those where the comedians go away on their oh, city yeah. breaks and that kind of thing. I, I would need to pay two and a half grand to watch that. So. You provide the two and a half grand. We <laughs> send regular videos absolutely done. absolutely I'd have no problem whatsoever doing city breaks all around Europe and and, and ringing in home and yeah. going yes it's brilliant okay okay um, <laughs> well it, it's I'm delighted we make Carmel Quinn and Glenty's very happy somebody else is going to be happy this day next week uh, I take it Sean tickets are now back on sale again and if people want to get a ticket highlandradio.com ring us on 0749125000 yeah. you'll be only too happy to provide tickets to those who want them absolutely yeah as you rightly mm -hmm. said lines are back open and yep. they will probably stay open until about quarter past 11 next Friday, Friday. So, so if you haven't bought a ticket and you want to uh, try and win two and a half thousand for next week then now's mm. the time to buy it excellent uh, Sean thank you very much indeed it's uh, 18 minutes to 12 going to take a short break back after these
Celebrating Meatloaf, 25th September, Mount Erigal Hotel, with American Idol winner Caleb Johnson and Meatloaf's original band, The Neverland Express, perform Bat Out of Hell in all its entirety and other hits. Tickets on sale this Thursday, 10 a.m. from Mount Erigal Hotel Reception and Ticketmaster.ae. Celebrating Meatloaf, endorsed by Jim Steinman and Meatloaf, presented by Joe Gallagher Entertainment. From Limerick to London, Newbridge to New York, or Stony Batter to Sydney, wherever you are and whenever you're jetting off, get global travel money at your local post office. Make your money matter more with 0% commission on cash and card. Search Unpost Travel Money or visit your local post office today. T's and C's apply. Unpost Money Currency Card is issued by PPS EUSA, pursuant to license by MasterCard International. PPS EUSA is authorised by the National Bank of Belgium and is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. Unpost is authorised by the Minister for Finance to provide foreign currency cash. It's almost Easter, so it's time to pick up some M&S Collection Easter eggs for the people you really like. For your favourite relative, perhaps the Belgian milk chocolate nutty egg, hand-decorated in County Meath. For the person you want to woo, there's the golden blonde egg, made by master Irish chocolatiers. Or here's an idea, you could just buy one for yourself. These are not just Easter eggs, these are M&S Collection Easter eggs. Subject to availability, selected stores. This Easter, come rain or sun, put a spring in their steps and seek out somewhere special as a family. From Easter trails for young explorers to a treasure trove of stories at historic places and room to roam in the fresh spring air. You'll find more than one great day out, on your doorstep or further away, with the National Trust this Easter. Search National Trust NI and start planning your family's adventure. Highland Radio weather updates with Ireland West Airport. Time to book the family summer holiday. Fly to Barcelona, Faro, Milan, Majorca, and much more for a perfect family getaway. Ireland West Airport. Don't just take off, take it easy. Weather forecast, cold with outbreaks of rain, heavy at times, falling as sleet and snow in places. The rain will become patchier this evening. Dry spells will develop. Top temperatures today, 5 to 7 degrees Celsius, possibly cooler in Donegal, with moderate northerly winds backing southerly, occasionally increasing fresh. Any lingering rain will clear tonight. It'll turn largely dry with long clear spells. Some showers developing, though, toward morning. Cold with lowest overnight temperatures, minus 1 to minus 2 to plus 1 degrees Celsius, some frost and ice forming in light southwesterly or variable winds. Tomorrow a dry start with spells of sunshine, just isolated showers. More frequent and widespread showers will spread in the afternoon, becoming heavy at times, some thunderstorms and hail possible. Top temperatures tomorrow a little warmer, 8 to 10 degrees Celsius in moderate winds. Now, if you listen regularly to Highland Radio News and indeed to the Ninth Noon Show, you'll know we've had a lot of discussion about the restoration of Carndonna Daycare Services and uh, Councillor Albert Doherty has been raising this quite a lot in the context of the Regional Health Forum West and there is also a local restoration uh, of the Daycare Service Committee in Carndonna. It's chaired by Tony Doherty and Tony joins us. Uh, Tony, good morning. Good morning, Donald. Thanks for having us on the show. It's it's our pleasure, Tony. Uh, Tony, you recently uh, held a survey uh, around Carn just to gauge how much real interest and demand there is for this service. And, uh, you know, you got over 279 people saying they would use the service straight away. Um, surely Minister Mary Butler and others must take notice of that. Yeah, so... Um we, we decided, because we haven't had the service uh, now for four years, the, the, the service closed down uh, at the start of COVID, and rightly so. And that's a way back now in March 2020. So we haven't had a daycare service in Carindona for unbelievably over four years now. Um, and it was a thriving uh, service that we had at that time. So what we thought was very important, you know, we had a meeting in the Colgan Hall in Carindona back last October, uh, to highlight the fact that the service hadn't reopened again after COVID because Minister Mary Butler, in uh, whenever COVID was starting to relent way back in May uh, of 2021, she tweeted that daycare services were opening during the summer of 2021 and that any services that required remedial action would be open by the end of 2021. 
that didn't happen in Carrangunna. So we had a meeting in the Colgan Hall, uh, a town hall type meeting in the Colgan Hall last October. Uh, it was a very wet uh, Friday evening. We thought we'd get, you know, you know, 30 or 40, without seats for 30 or 40 people. In actual fact, over 200 people. The hall was full, uh, turned out, in a really bad, uh, uh, awful evening. Uh, I suppose to, for us to update them on, on, on the fact that there wasn't a daycare service and there was, there was palpable anger in the room that such a vital service was being denied uh, our most vulnerable people in our community. These are the people who uh, educated us, filled the potholes and made this country uh, what it is. And particularly coming in light after COVID and the time whenever, you know, mental health. And these people have been in the room for watching televisions for 16 hours a day. Um, that we didn't prioritise getting the service uh, back in place. So we were given a mandate at that time to set up a, a meeting with the HSE, which took place in November uh, of, of last year. It was a very unproductive meeting. By the way, the, the, the reason the HSE gave was because uh, the, uh, of IPC, infection, infection Prevention Control Measures, were not adequate at uh, Carrington Community Hospital. They deemed it unsuitable. Um, we question that, and uh, I've talked on your show before about mm-hmm. about the uh, about some of the issues that they had, and don't really want to get into that right now because we've done that already. So uh, the the other m- the mandate that we got uh, was to set up a meeting with Minister Mary Butler. Now we've tried to get that meeting through Charity uh, mm-hmm. uh, to our local TD Charity McConnell, uh, and as yet we've been unsuccessful to having that meeting uh, with uh, mm-hmm. Minister Mary Butler. So we're really disappointed that that hasn't taken place. We would call on any politicians out there or indeed Charlie McConnell to please redouble his efforts to have that meeting take place with Minister Mary Butler. So just getting to your point, so we decided then that uh, what we need to do is to, to really ascertain, well, is the service actually needed? Are we overestimating that, you know, what, what is actually needed out there? So we did an online survey, a survey monkey. Um, and believe it or not, though, we got over 500 replies um, and as you said, uh, uh, we've got over 500 uh, uh, support uh, letters of support from uh, that survey. One person uh, thought that it wasn't a good idea, and that's fine as well. Um, but the, the key figure that came out of that was 200, over 270 uh, people would avail of that service right now if it was open and these are all individual you know it's not like one person you know putting in the same yeah. reply each time the survey monkey is designed that it has to be from a specific email and you know we'd be happy to share the results of this with the with the hse mm-hmm. but unbelievably to us and i think to your listeners out there is that over 270 people uh would avail of the service right now we also in, as part of that survey asked, you know, many people need the service now, many people, one to three years, three to seven, and over seven mm. over seven years. You know, so over 270 need it right now, from one to three mm. years, 89, from three to seven years, 104, and seven years plus 190 people. That's all additional, yeah. if you like, right? Of course. It just shows, Donald, the overwhelming need for this service at this time. Uh, and, you know, you can add yeah. in COVID into that. Uh, and what I would also say is, you know, the, what the daycare service does is, you know, it takes pressure off GPs because it's an early warning of course. Uh, system. It takes pressure off AE, or, or it takes the pressure mm-hmm. off hospital admissions and also nursing homes. Yeah, and, and vitally so it improves the quality of life of, of the clients as well because, I mean, if someone is sitting in their house 24-7, that's not going to be necessarily conducive to being social. It's not going to be conducive to positive mental health. If you're going out and you're meeting people and you're, you know, working with people and you're, you're you know, it, it, it's a lot better. So it, it, it has a huge impact, I'm sure, on the on the positive mental health of, of, of people that use the service as well. We did reference earlier that Councillor Albert Doherty has been raising this on a regular basis for years within the context of the Western, uh, with the, the, the Regional Health Forum West. Councillor Doherty joins us on the line. Albert, good morning. Good morning, Dono. Good morning, Tony. Yeah, Albert, you, you, you and Tony have, have discussed this obviously often and have had many discussions on it. You, you've been raising yeah, this I just want at meetings. To yep. Consistently um, uh, from, from the passing of the, the COVID 
and as late as last Tuesday, yep. again, was able to verbally share statistics that I'm sure the group will put together comprehensively and forward, uh, asking for timelines from the HSE on and their working group on their prioritisation of potential accommodation, calling for the engagement of the local committee, uh, t- sorry, calling for the local committee to be engaged as mm-hmm. a critical stakeholder. Mm-hmm. And really what I'm just saying is that this was a facility it was very, very well received, worked very, very efficiently in the area, and it is very sorely missed, and you and Tony have covered how much of a social loss it has been yeah. to this area, and all we want is restoration. Are you getting any indication from the HSC that they're closer to restoring a full-time service, or are you still getting the same answer you've been getting over and over again? I received tentatively small positive steps that there now was a focus group uh, looking at within the hospital grounds what can be uh, developed, explored. But sometimes uh, I see these as um, holding letters. And that's why on uh, Tuesday, and uh, Dermot Monaghan was absent, but Maria Ferguson took my representations, listened to my representations, that we need the involvement of this committee as the stakeholders because you will have more people with local input assisting restoring a service to uh, a a significant number that Tony has just quoted who said they would use it in the morning. In terms of the work that needs to be done, it, it seems clear that the HSC has effectively ruled out returning to what was there pre-COVID. How long is it going to take to put replacement in place that serves the needs of the community and also meets the uh, requirements of the HSE in HICWA? That was the constant received up until my last uh, correspondence where they said that the Capital Works, now we're looking, sorry, the Capital Works, we're looking at uh, within the hospital grounds, they were looking at the possible use of the JCM, which is nearby building, which is going through the decongregation. And they also were looking at the lease of facilities in Carndona. And that's the impetus there that uh, we welcome. But it will only be an impetus when they narrow it down and say, these are our priorities and this is what we're going to do. And the powers that be will provide the capital that's required and that the service that's sorely missed will be restored with the help of a very active and positive local community. Albert, thank you. uh, Donald... Yeah, Tony, you have the the final word to yourself. Albert, thank you. Sorry, we, we have uh, we have written to the HSE with the survey yeah. results recently, and we've also we we'll also be writing to them to say that we welcome them having a meeting, but we would like to be stakeholders yeah. in any future meetings uh, in relation to this, and we'll be constructive in relation to that. To that, the community will be constructive, but we are we you know, would like to say to everyone that's out there listening this morning to make representation to your local councillor or your TD uh, to hear the message that we're not happy and we won't put up with it and we're not going to go away. Uh, and for all candidates and councillors and TDs out there, you need to get behind this issue. Yeah. You need to educate yourself on this issue. Uh, we in the committee are not happy with our local politicians and the support they have, say, for Albert, who's, who's on the call here now. Uh, we have a mandate. We want, uh, we're calling on all politicians to get us that meeting with the Minister Mary Butler so she understands uh, uh, the, 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 the size of the problem that we have here in North Um and we also were calling on the HSC, as I said, to uh, to get us involved in any potential solutions going forward. Um, we have a yeah. Facebook page, page, and we'd ask people to you know to continue to engage with us. And thank you for your time this morning. And thank you, Tony, and thank you, Albert. That's Tony and Albert there. The ongoing campaign to restore day services in Carndona. That's pretty much it for the Nine Till Noon show. Just want to give you a few of our final comments before we go. A very happy ninety-fifth birthday to Mary Bogle in St. Eunan's in Rafo that comes from Rodney. Uh, a number of comments says school children are influenced by teachers or influencers. Will they just 
get caught up in the latest whatever it is without knowing the full consequences. 16 is too young to vote. Caller says, how many people will leave reused machines, drive back to wherever they bought the bottle for 15 cent if they've been charged to deposit and it's an unreturnable bottle or can? Very likely it'll go into the nearest bin which has been used for general rubbish. Uh, Caller says, if you have these continued... Um, increases in the price of alcohol. More drink will be drunk at home and people are concerned that that will be the outcome of increases. Uh, Caller referencing the meeting that took place in Bunkrana the other night. Uh, Why would Charlie and Niall not come to the event? All well and good coming to your door looking for votes but when there is something like that meeting that took place in Carandona, or in Bunkrana, excuse me, uh, on on, uh, Tuesday night of course, the candidates should be turning up and uh, finally I can tell you that the golden egg was found today in the town park by Eunan McNamee and Patricia Gallagher congratulations to them this has been the 9 till noon show no 9 till noon show tomorrow it's good Friday Greg is back with you on Tuesday of next week Uh, thank you to Shannon thank you to Donna Marie who produced thanks to Sean and Fanula for their work on the Community Heroes and all indeed and the whole team that worked on that most importantly thanks to our contributors and thanks to you for listening from myself Donald Kavanagh have a very good day Rossview Interiors are having a massive Easter sale. Today, Thursday, this Saturday the 30th, and on Tuesday the 2nd.